The story begins in the capital of the Howard Empire which was invaded by a powerful dragon named Genelosir. Heroes bravely faced him and the leader of these heroes warned Genelosir to prepare himself since this hero had an intention to end an attack on the Howard Empire just to kill Genelosir and save their people. Genelosir was mad because his son was killed by humans which he will never accept. He addressed these heroes as insects and he told them that they never tire of crawling out. He was furiously staring at the heroes while stating that half of the empire was too low of compensation for his dead child named Louis. His powerful aura emerges the moment he screams that he will tear the people limb from limb and crush the other half of the empire. He then cast an attack on the heroes, and at the same time, the heartbeat of our main protagonist continued to beat as he felt intense while reading this webtoon, Chronicles of the Dragon. He was currently in episode 7 but he cannot continue it since there are still no new chapters as of the moment. He was staring at the last page of the webtoon while currently lying in a hospital bed. He was diagnosed with an illness called amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It causes the motor nerve to gradually die causing paralysis of muscles throughout the body and eventually, death. And when he was diagnosed with it at age 25, it was his death sentence. At a young age with no family, the money he had been saving and a young body that still had so much to offer were all destroyed by a single disease. Four years after being diagnosed with Luo Jerig's disease, he's already at the age of 29 and all he had left was a skinny body and this amateur webtoon he was reading. He already accepted the fact that these two were all he had left. While recalling his past, his heartbeat suddenly becomes crucial. The last thing he saw was his doctor who was rushing to him. But then he concluded that his life finally ended without finishing the webtoon he was reading. While accepting his death, a silhouette appeared. He slowly opened his eyes and saw a long-haired man who was staring at him with excitement. This man lifts him up and he sees himself in the mirror, but shockingly, in the body of a little dragon. At first, he was so confused about what was going on. He then screamed upon his realization that he really became a dragon living in a huge castle. Lucky for him, he managed to calm himself. At first, he thought he was going to faint. He went through reality denial and after going through that, he tried to figure out what was going on. But, once he accepted reality, he realized that he reincarnated as a dragon. In all the novels and webtoons he has read, there was never a weak dragon, which is why he never complains about being reincarnated as a dragon especially since he believes it's the strongest being in the world. And most importantly, between cats, humans, dwarfs, elves, and fairies, dragons have a huge average lifespan which is up to 10,000 years. In his previous life, he had to work from a young age, then got sick and died in his prime years. But in this new life, he believes it's different. Being reincarnated as a dragon with a long and healthy life is the ultimate gift for him. He was so grateful for this body, and he was more excited thinking that he could overcome any obstacles in his way. He was dancing in happiness and his father in this world suddenly carried him, calling him by the name Louis and asking him why he was very excited. His father invited him to eat and brought him to the dining area. Louis sat down, wearing a yellow cutie bib that had a rabbit imprinted on it. Louis felt nervous while staring at the food his father served to him. The food looked messy and uninviting for him. His father was staring at him and noticed that he didn't like the food. His father then said that this meal is best when it's fresh so he must eat it. Louis never gets used to this but knowing that people follow Roman law if they were in Rome so he must also follow the dragon laws since he is now a dragon. He grabbed a little of the food and tasted it hoping that it would taste better than what he expected. To his surprise, its taste is similar to a strawberry and he didn't deny the fact that it really tastes good. Since the taste wasn't bad, he ate more and more until he felt full. Do you like it? There's more, eat up. His father said, with his eyes that are shimmering, Louis can say that his father's eyes are very expressive. I don't want any more, father, he answered. But his father feels like he was pierced in the chest upon hearing the word father as he wants Louis to address him as dad. His father taught him the word dad and even spelled it out. Louis was just staring at his father and realized that he didn't even know the name of this man. Hey, what's my dad's name? He asked. But then, his father was confused as to why Louis asked it despite the fact that it's already been a month since he was born. His father then said that his name was Genelosir, but then, Louis paused upon hearing the name. He feels nervous as he realizes that Genelosir is the dragon who went mad after his son was killed. Louis was so shocked and suddenly got off the chair while Genelosir asked him why. Louis stayed away from Genelosir and was trembling while staring at his father's face. He then ran away hoping that everything was not true. Genelosir called his name but he didn't dare to look back. He ran as fast as he could until he reached the library. He entered and searched for some useful books. He was checking each book until he finally found reliable information. He found the map of the Howard Empire and clearly remembers that the Howard Empire is the name of an empire in an amateur webtoon he used to read before he died. He was confused and realized that he didn't reincarnate as a dragon but instead possessed by the webtoon he was reading. He was so puzzled and his father Genelozer came and asked him if he was hurt. 
Janelos are bought some fruits for him to eat and with how he cares for Louis, Louis can say that he's such a gentle and caring father. Still, he cannot forget that Janelos are will go berserk and kill numerous people. He can't also forget how Janelos are said that he can't ever live peacefully again because of the arrogance of humans and he even bows to dye the entire continent with blood. Louis smiled as he remembered that Janeloser went insane after a human killed its hatchling. He thinks for a moment once again and asks Janeloser if he has an older brother. But as per Janeloser, Louis is their one and only son. Louis panicked upon hearing it and he asked another question to Janeloser if he had plans to have other kids. Janeloser instantly answered no and said that he promised his wife, the mother of Louis, that they'd have one and raise it well. In short, there were none before and there won't be any after Louis, which means that the hatchling that dies is none other than him which paranoid him. In the webtoon, he remembers that Janeloser loses his kid and goes insane in the Empire. Louis slipped knowing that he would still die in this world. Lucky for him, Janeloser caught him but he was still puzzled thinking that he was just a trigger for the story to begin. The child of a villainous dragon who will vaporize and disappear before the story ever begins. He was emotional knowing that he had become a dragon, one scheduled to die, or a terminally ill dragon. The next day, Louis went to their treasury alone by himself, lying on the gold coins, panting in disappointment, saying that he was terminally ill just like in his previous life. He was upset that he couldn't even spend all this money since he would die again. In short, he possessed the body of a dragon just for nothing. He was so mad and told himself that he couldn't just die easily in this second life. He went back to his room and searched for more books to read and got information. He started reading and told himself that he must remember when Janeloser went berserk. If he can find out when Janeloser went berserk, he believes he can also find out when he is scheduled to die. Luckily, he remembered it. It would be in the year 3589 AC. He immediately takes note of this information, and since the year in this present time is 3090 AC, he concludes it'll be between the ages of 498 and 499. It would be one year before he achieved adulthood. He's going to die as a child but this time, he won't allow it to happen. He smiled and told himself that he must survive for the next 499 years. He also doesn't have any plans to back out and continue this life. Meanwhile, he went to their dining area and ate lots of their food. Janeloser was shocked to see him eat so much. After eating several servings, he asked for another bowl. Of course, Janeloser loved him so much so he gave his son another bowl. Here, there's plenty of it so eat as much as you want, he said while giving back the bowl to Louis. While they were eating, there was a bug flying above them. The bug went down to the food of Louis without Louis noticing it. He was about to swallow the food where the insect landed but lucky for him that Janeloser saw it and immediately stopped him. Janeloser then flicked away the spoon causing the bug to also fly away. Louis doesn't know the reason why his father did it so he got mad at him and drew a tantrum. But then, Janeloser ignored him as he picked up the bug and showed it to Louis, telling him that he almost got himself into trouble. According to him, this bug is an artificial creature his father is researching, but it's not dangerous to dragons like them. He just rattled since he's afraid knowing that this bug is poisonous which might be dangerous to Louis at a young age. Louis was shocked upon knowing that it was poisonous. His father then calms him down by saying that it'll be fine since he didn't eat it. Janeloser was staring at the bug, wondering if this bug successfully escaped the lab. At the same time, Louis is still nervous since he was almost poisoned. Because of it, he told himself to be more cautious and start paying attention to everything. After eating, he headed somewhere while carrying a book. He was walking in the aisle that had several standing knight statues but unfortunately, one of the statues sighted him and thought he was an enemy, so the statue moved and Louis noticed it in an instant. The statue swung its sword and seeing it made Louis scream in fear. For the second time, his father saved his life by pushing him away and blocking the statue's weapon. He activates his magic power and his powerful aura emerges. Without any hesitation, he destroyed the standing knight statue that almost killed his son. He then asks Louis if he's fine but Louis can't utter any words. Janeloser feels weird since he's pretty sure he had these statues set up so that it wouldn't harm his son. Louis was still nervous. He was sweating heavily knowing that he almost died twice just now. A few days later, there were no more suspicions, instead, he was convinced. Janeloser and Louis went outside their castle to get some fresh air. Louis was so happy. He was impressed upon seeing a gigantic monster. His father then informed him that this mountain is the left fang of the earth. One of the two gigantic on the end of the continent and is famous for being home to many mysterious races. Louis' eyes were shimmering while staring at the mountain, believing that this mountain was bigger than the Mount Everest and was definitely different from what he saw in books. While staring at the mountain, there was a butterfly flying near him. It caught his attention and he was following it while singing. After a minute of following it, the sky becomes dark. Lighting then happened and electrocuted Louis. He screamed in pain and he was too weak after it. He gained wounds all over his body and he was confused about what was happening. On the other hand, Janeloser ran as fast as he could and he rattled knowing that his son was in pain. 
But then, before he could reach Louis, Louis was hit by the lightning for the second time. Louis was already trembling in pain. He was electrocuted once again and he concludes the webtoon script really wants him to die. After he got hit by the lightning thrice, Genaloser was able to grab him. Genaloser was crying seeing his son in pain. He immediately brings back Louis to their castle but luckily, Louis is able to make it alive. Still, he was afraid that he almost died. He got hit by three lightning strikes in the same spot and he cannot believe that it really happened in such a short period of time. He was crying thinking that the script really wanted him to die. But, he was annoyed since it was too early and the year isn't 3589 AC yet. His death is still 498 years away and he's supposed to die at the hands of humans. Now, he concludes that this kind of incident might happen since he's very determined not to die. He stomps his feet on his bed and deduces that the original story might only start once he dies. But then, he asked himself how the webtoon's baby dragon survived for 500 years. The confusion only makes his head hurt since his case is very complicated. He was thinking for a moment but then got off his bed after a minute, telling himself that he had no time to think and he must do something to survive. He believes he needs something to save him from this death mark. He went to his father's room and angrily entered without asking permission. His father was so excited hearing his voice, especially when Louis finally called him daddy. Geneloser patted Louis' head and asked him what was the matter. Louis then asked him if they had any equipment that could protect him. Geneloser said yes but then it was very early for Louis to use those equipment. According to him, to use that equipment, Louis needs something called attribute power, and it takes a lot of training to wield it. You're still young. You can learn it when you're older, in a few hundred years, Geneloser said, but then, Louis refused as he wanted to learn it now. Geneloser was shocked and wondered why his son was in a hurry. Still, he was hesitant to let Louis since he was still young. Can't I? Can't I learn cause I'm little? Louis asked with a cute face. His father then said that he usually should learn after he has passed the stage of infancy. Louis intentionally sparkles his eyes hoping that his father would agree seeing his cuteness. In the end, Geneloser agrees to teach Louis. Louis was so happy and asked his father to teach him right away. But as per Geneloser, before they start, there's a place that they need to visit first. Louis asks where it is and Genelosa replies that Louis must seek the elders as the child of the dragon race to discover his own attributes for the first time. Louis was confused since he didn't know anything yet. After discussing, they went outside their castle which excited Louis the most. Seeing his excitement satisfied Genelosa. Louis then asks him how they could get to the elders' place and Genelosa then activates his magic power while telling his son that they must fly to get to the elders. As he was activating his magic, Louis felt a strong blow of wind which made him cover himself with his two arms. After a few seconds, a dragon transformation appeared in front of him and he instantly recognized it. This time, his father transformed into a dragon from his human form. Geneloser's skin was dark and he was so tall. Louis was staring at him and was very happy to see a real dragon in person. Geneloser then allows Louis to come and climb to him. Louis then hopped to his father's hand and his father immediately flew while telling him to hold on tight. While flying so high, Louis got scared. His father continued to go higher while Louis closed his eyes and held tightly while asking his father how high they were going. His father laughed at him and said that they were still a long way off. Geneloser passed through the clouds and at this moment, Louis bravely opened his eyes and asked his father if they were going to soar through the atmosphere and into space. Geneloser then informed him that they were almost in the elder's place. It becomes so dark and Louis sees something white above them, which seems to be a castle. Louis was jaw-dropping while saying it was a goddess. Geneloser was glad to know that Louis was surprised and he said that it is the sacred land of use, the dragons. It is called Silver Flow Castle. They finally landed outside the castle and Louis was amazed to see that it was bigger now that they were close to it. Geneloser then immediately transformed to his human form and told his son that he must get in. Upon entering, they walked through the aisle and in front of them were several dragons, different in size and shape. In the middle is Sandra, the leader of the 13 dragon elders. Geneloser then greeted all the elders and introduced his name and added that he was the son of Pamus. Louis was stuttering while also saying hello to their elders. Bardis, one of the 13 elders then said that Geneloser's son looks very smart and gentle for the grandson of Pamus. The dragon named Pamus was right beside him. Geneloser then also greeted his father, saying that it's been a long time since they saw each other. Pamus agreed and said that it's been 623 years in total. He also recalled that the last time Geneloser visited this castle was when he introduced his wife Valentina. By the way, you should have shown my grandson as soon as he was born. Why do I have to meet him for the first time along with the other old folks? He asked. Louis was born just a month ago. You want to force him to come here? Geneloser answered which annoyed his father. Pamus stares at Louis and Louis does the same thing. Pamus moved his head closer to Louis and he then uttered, Glampa, which was supposed to be Grandpa. Because of his cuteness, he was able to make his grandfather fall in love with him. 
Pamus was thrilled and proudly said that he was really the grandpa of Louis. He also acknowledged Louis as a fine-looking child. Because of his happiness, the other dragons can see how he absolutely adores his first grandchild, and they know that Pamus has been longing for a grandchild for so long. At this moment, Geneloser then told Sandra what they needed. Sandra even said that it was too early for Louis. Geneloser agreed with her and told her that it was just that Louis expressed his wish to learn. Pamus laughed and said that his grandson is so passionate just like him. Since he was disturbing the discussion, Sandra ordered him to be quiet, but Pamus couldn't stop himself because of his excitement. Sandra decided to continue the discussion and ordered Louis to step into the center. Before Louis could follow her command, he first looked at his father and Geneloser then told him not to worry as he only needed to stay still in the center. Louis trusts his father knowing that his father loved him so much. He then went to the center of the elders and he forced himself to be calm. Sandra then told all the elders that they should begin. All the dragons activate their powers to create attributes for Louis. A straight light emerges in different colors and Louis is amazed upon seeing it. Sandra ordered him to close his eyes and chant, My lifelong companion, come. After Louis followed her instructions, the attributes then started appearing. Louis was possessed by a golden light and he still closed his eyes since Sandra didn't give him permission yet. Sandra had an hourglass above his hand which surprised Geneloser knowing that it's an abstract attribute, time. Because of the first attribute Louis got, Geneloser believes that his son is a genius, especially since abstract attributes are usually stronger than natural attributes. The next attribute they checked is the one from the hand of Pamus. Pamus guffaws as he declares that the second attribute his grandson obtained is a strength attribute. He thought that Louis had a dual attribute but then there's another attribute from the hand of Bardis. As per Sandra, this attribute is a space attribute. She was shocked by the fact that Louis got a total of three attributes. According to her, the first dragon King Kytus and the worst dragon ever swallowed by the evil, Rotbrier, were the only two dragons who had triple attributes in the long history of the dragon tribe. Because of the triple attributes, she said that Louis is destined to write a new history. Louis at the same time heard their words and he was very happy to see the attributes he got. Surprisingly, another attribute appeared which is a mental attribute. These attributes flew toward Louis which created a blinding light that even Geneloser covered his eyes with his arm. Upon seeing these four attributes, Louis became more excited and grabbed it all together. His excitement was cut off the moment he looked at the elders who were staring at him closely. Louis got afraid of how they looked at them and also his father got nervous and screamed. After what happened in the castle of elders, they then went back to their castle. Time, space, strength, and mental, a total of four attributes. A talent that even made the dragons unable to speak. Potential so vast, enough that it could disrupt the balance of the original plot. With this level of ability, Louis wondered if he could possibly handle all the events that would be happening in this story alone. Perhaps, the flow of the story has been altered because of this. He concludes that humans might be frustrated because they cannot kill him. But then, he sighed thinking that there's no use of having the greatest talent if there's still a chance he might die before he even matures. He crossed his arms while thinking then suddenly became very determined not to die, believing that he still had hopes. While his talent has brought about crises, he concludes this is also an opportunity. If he hones this talent well, he knows his chance of survival will also greatly increase. Most importantly, he will not be the Louis from the original story. He has memories of his previous life, so he's aware of the impending crisis. He will utilize these to the best of his ability and ensure his survival. Magic skills that manipulate attributes, and a martial art that handles attributes and the body simultaneously. Between these two, he wonders which should he master first for the sake of survival. Or perhaps, he should put aside the dilemma and learn both at the same time. This body he possessed was a dragon, blessed with abundant mana, and born with four attributes so he was positive that he could survive with just a bit more effort. He opened his books to get some knowledge and started to train himself. But then, he heard footsteps behind him and it turned out that his father came with a meal since it was already time for him to eat. The meal looks appetizing which causes Louis to droll. As the saying goes, even a journey to Kumgang Mountain starts with a meal so he also decided to snack first. His meal consists of Lamus, a water attribute potion like blue ice crystals. There is also a stem of hydrogen, a wood attribute potion, and is kind of chewy. Another one is a sky jellyfish. It's a wind attribute potion and is as fluffy as cotton candy. The last one is the heart of Thunderbird. It's a thunder attribute potion that gives a fizzy sensation. Although these potions contain energy that could cause ordinary beings to explode if consumed carelessly. But since dragons have a permanent orphan called the dragon heart, they can convert the mana from nature into their own attributes, that's why such a feast is possible. Louis then started eating and he intended to eat a lot to grow rapidly. But then, after a minute of eating, he suddenly fell asleep so Geneloser concludes that his son must be very tired. He sent Louis to his room and let him sleep peacefully. Louis was snoring while he was sleeping beside his toy named Toto. While sleeping, there's a dark object floating inside his room. 
This thing was spinning and suddenly became a fork. This fork still had the purple object below it and this fork dropped on the floor. The purple thing then comes out from the room of Louis without Louis noticing it. The next day, Louis woke up early in the morning. He was shocked to see himself in his bed since he couldn't remember when he fell asleep. He then heard his father calling him for breakfast so he immediately got up and was about to get off from his bed but he suddenly slipped and ended up falling and sunk on the floor. Louis was startled the moment he saw the fork right in front of him. He sat and held the fork and realized that he almost died from a fork stuck in the floor. He was wondering how he slipped then saw that his toy Toto was tied to his tail. He was shocked to see Toto torn since Toto was the only one he could vent to. He grabbed Toto and decided to ask his father to fix it for him. When he got to the dining area, he immediately ate while his father stitched the toy as he saw how sad Louis was. Don't worry, your papa will fix it up nicely, okay, Janeloser said. But all of a sudden, Louis panicked as he woke up and gasped. He was so confused since he clearly remembered that he was at the dining area with his father. He then heard his father's voice once again, calling him for breakfast. As he got off from his bed, he saw Toto but Toto was fine so he wondered when this got fixed. He then went to the dining area and told his father something seemed off. Janeloser panicked and asked him what was wrong. He even thought that his son was hurt. Since Louis can't determine if he's in pain, he just tells his father that his memory is spotty and he keeps falling asleep. But then, Janeloser was silent for a moment. After a few seconds, he then told his son that it was about time. Louis asked what he meant to say and he then answered that Louis was not in pain, it's just that his sleeping phase is approaching. According to him, their dragons have two sleeping phases for growth. He believes that his son Louis is feeling sleepy often because his first sleeping phase is nearing. Louis asked how long he would sleep, and as per Geneloser, there was no exact time but it would be roughly a hundred years. As expected, Louis was shocked to know it. He recalled that he had this absurd death flag just a few days ago and now finds out that he has to sleep for a hundred years. He was so upset thinking that the webtoon was really asking him to be killed. He suddenly ran away screaming that this couldn't be happening. His father called him but he didn't look back. He went to his room, put a scarf on his head, and wrote a plan to stay awake as much as possible. Firstly, he plans to avoid eating since he believes a full belly makes one sleepy. Secondly, skip a shower since this may tend to relax him. Thirdly, maximize movement as it leads to exhaustion. Fourthly, he plans not to go near the bed since seeing a bed makes him want to lie down. He was very determined to stay awake as much as possible. But then, after a few hours, Louis already felt sleepy. While walking, his father suddenly approached with food and asked him to eat. Louis avoided it and ran away from his father as fast as he could. He directly went to his room and breathed deeply as he felt relieved that he managed to escape from his father. He opened some books while telling himself that he could not afford to let his guard down until he found a way to resist sleep. Lucky for him he found information from the book he was holding on how to stay awake. It includes standing, pinching the thighs, eating something spicy, splashing his face with cold water, and lastly avoiding reading books. The fifth one seemed to be true since Louis almost fell asleep. He slapped himself but the same thing happened. He forced himself not to sleep but his vision slowly disappeared. In the end, he fell asleep and heard his father waking him up. He screamed as he woke up and his father then asked if he slept well. Louis then said that he didn't sleep and only dozed off for a bit. His father suddenly congratulated him which confused him why. Janeloser then said that they are now celebrating the hundredth birthday of Louis. And upon hearing what his father just said, Louis was shocked as expected. One hundred years ago, Janeloser was searching for Louis and found him in his room sleeping peacefully. Janeloser brought some snacks for his son but then he believes his son fell asleep while reading the book. He carried Louis and laid him down on the bed. He wished that his son would eat first before sleeping but he guessed he could not do anything now that Louis was already sleeping. Now, he just hopes that his son will wake up safely. Good night my son, I'll see you tomorrow, he uttered while patting Louis' head. The next day, Janeloser was inside his room and was writing something. But then, he was disturbed as he was startled upon hearing a loud noise. He immediately went to his son's room and he panicked the moment he saw Louis already lying on the ground below the broken bed. Janeloser immediately removed the bed and asked Louis if he was fine. Fortunately, Louis was still alive and he even sleep-talked. Janeloser checked the surroundings but he never saw a sign of a breach. He then concludes that the legs of the bed made out of noble periton wood simply broke out of nowhere. In the decades that followed, several mysterious incidents continued happening. Just like someone was trying to kill Louis. Louis gets close to dying lots of times and his father doesn't even know why these things keep happening. So, as a safety measure, Janeloser created safeguards in every way he could. His lifespan has been shortened a bit but that doesn't matter to him as long as he can keep Louis safe. For the past 60 years, he hasn't had even one good night's sleep, and the total of incidents that treated Louis' life is 4,120 times. Because of it, Janeloser won't believe that it was only a coincidence. What he believes is that there was someone who was trying to kill his son.
It's just that he cannot think of anyone who would dare to do it. The world has forgotten the dragons, and only a few xenomorphs are aware of their existence. So he cannot think how any being could harm Louis without him realizing it. Only dragons would have that kind of power. But everyone who lives nearby protects their clan's hatchlings like their lives. So a part of him sometimes believes that all that happens is really a coincidence. One night, a sudden explosion happened outside Louis' room. It was because of Genelosser who attacked the standing knight statues who dared to attack his son. Genelosser was so mad at these creatures and these creatures also dared to attack him for blocking them. They still tried to charge to Louis' room but of course, Genelosser won't let it happen. He used his power to these statues and his power makes them unable to see him or any way to enter the room of his son. The statues didn't move at all since they only saw darkness. They were instantly stabbed all of a sudden until none of them left. While staring at the broken pieces of statues, Genelosa recalled what his father said that these happenings can't be helped since geniuses will always need to overcome lots of obstacles. Not only this, but many other trials and tribulations will befall Louis in the future. Upon hearing it, Genelosa was worried for the sake of his son. His father then said that the same thing happened to the first king dragon. In short, Louis' talent is so overpowered which is why there's someone who is trying to permanently remove him. Genelosa clenched his fist and told himself that it couldn't be happening. God, fate, or whatever it is, he vows to protect his son Louis from anything. Going back to the present time, Louis was staring at himself in the mirror, wondering if he had grown up a bit. But then, he got annoyed by the fact that he only grew a little despite that it's already a hundred years past. He suddenly pauses as he realizes that he's still alive even after a hundred years. He clearly recalled that he almost died every day. He was so confused and concluded that it may be because he was safe while sleeping. He decided to forget about it and focus on the good news that he was still alive. This time, his father passed through his room and told him to go downstairs since their dinner was almost ready. Louis answered yes but at the same time, he noticed that his father seemed to be getting old. He then guessed that he really was a tragedy. Good, I'll be a good hatchling and listen to you from now on, he uttered while clenching his fists. He then chased his father and asked him to wait. He then said that he was already hungry. He also asked him why he was getting old and told him to get more sleep before working. After another more years, a little boy with white hair was in front of the mountain under a tree while practicing a sword technique. Upon swinging his sword made of wood, he creates a strong blow of force. He was panting after doing it and at the same time, someone called him from behind, addressing him as master. He then turned around and it turned out that this little boy was none other than Louis in his human form. He was called by his personal maid to hand him a towel. Louis held the towel and removed it from his maid's head. It turned out that his maid was a tiny little fairy named Finn. I see you've already gotten used to being in human form. You are indeed a descendant of the holy and great dragon clan, master, Finn stated. But then, Louis seemed to be annoyed. It's already been a damn 100 years, can you stop calling me your master, Finn? He said, but Finn insisted on calling him master since he's truly her master. She also said that it's a great pleasure for them, fairies, to honor the superior dragons. Louis just smiled upon hearing the word honor as he didn't think of it. Perhaps some time after the end of his first hibernation, he was reading a book but he heard a noise coming from behind. He then saw a huge gift and went near it. He observed it first but he really heard a sound coming from the box. At that time, Finn comes out while screaming in happiness that she finally got oxygen. Because of coming out without a hint, Louis got startled and immediately turned around without knowing that he accidentally hit Finn with his tail. Finn bumped into the wall while Louis was covering both of his ears and closed his eyes because of his fear. He turned around slowly but then he saw Finn slowly slide down on the wall with her body upside down. What is that giant fly? He asked. Finn felt dizzy because of the impact after she got hit. Louis tried to move her body using a brush pen. He lifted up Finn using the pen while wondering what this creature was. Finn looked at him and was surprised. She tries to fly but then she cannot free herself with the pen on her clothes. She greeted Louis politely and introduced herself stating that she was from the royalty of the Starlight Fairies. She also said that she's honored to be the one who will bring Louis pleasure in the future. But then, Louis was puzzled. Finn then asked him to put her down and Louis agreed without any word. He then sat on the floor and crossed his arms then asked Finn what she meant to say by pleasure. Finn then removes the cloth covered with the present she had for Louis. She even makes a sound while removing the white cloth and says, For the holy and great baby dragon, we, the Starlight Fairies, have painstakingly prepared Starlight Fairy Disguise Place at version 23. According to Finn, it utilizes the genderless nature of the fairy family including clothes for both men and women, demons, and celestial clothes to suit the situation. There's a variety of choices with some limited edition sets. She claimed that the best part of this set is definitely her, a noble starlight fairy and the owner of the perfect body that can pull off any outfit. Louis was speechless knowing that this thing in front of him was the perfect dollhouse set. 
I mean, should I use you as a living toy? He asked awkwardly. Finn laughed and said that Louis is the holy, great, and wise baby dragon and that he got it correctly. But then, she suddenly flew the moment Louise hit the dollhouse as he doesn't like to play with these kinds of girly toys. After that happened, he questioned his father as to why he would give him such a gift. But it turns out, it was the number one gift that the hatchlings wanted. Of course, it doesn't matter to him whether they play dolls with fairies in a fantasy world or play wars. Still, the idea of playing with a living creature like a doll is kind of creepy so he wanted to send it back. The moment he prepared to give back the dollhouse, Finn cried and begged him not to do it. She even promised to do anything like cleaning or doing the laundry. She was holding Louis tail while continuously begging him not to kick her out. As it turns out, being a dragon's little friend is of great honor and a guaranteed path to greatness. The first fairy king, that unified the fairy clans, was the first dragon king's childhood toy. After days of crying and begging, she was accepted as a subordinate. Finn's 800 years old. She knows more than Louis does. And she's surprisingly helpful with the little things. And she's a natural spatialist and has a talent for storing things in subspaces. It's like his personal set of drawers. Finn even grabbed a book for him to read. She said that Louis is gonna study the separation and the manifestation of Mana Advance course. She then started summoning the meals of Louis and Louis was glad to see her comfortable doing it. He smiled a little and told himself that he had to get used to being accompanied by Finn. He started reading the book but he got disturbed when he heard a rumble of thunder. He then sighed and closed the book then said, it's been a few days and here we go again. He then stood and stared at the lightning strikes. The lightning becomes strong which worries Finn and warns him to be careful. Still, Louis confidently expanded his hand and clenched his fist. There was a bracelet on his wrist that had a stone on it and it surprisingly absorbed the lightning. Louis grits his teeth and proudly says that he has been struck by lightning hundreds of times now. Finn at the same time was shocked knowing that this stone Louis had is the thunder elemental stone. It utilizes the phenomenon that the more pure and stronger the power, the weaker it flows. It's a low-grade attribute stone that's relatively unstable. As it absorbs more lightning, it starts to fill up. As per Louis, the stone is already full of thunder so he needs to change it. Finn panicked the moment he saw a strong lightning strike headed his way. She screamed no master and Louis then turned around and also saw how the lightning got so strong. Luckily, he was able to activate a shield and Finn was surprised once again since she knows it's a spatial distortion field. Seeing such an advanced spatial distortion field so quickly makes her conclude that it's almost tier 1 magic. Even for a mana-blessed dragon, she could say that it's really too fast. She was staring at Louis with excitement thinking that she could write a great epic history because of Louis and tell it to everyone in their fairy clan for them to listen. While her eyes sparkle, Louis predicts that Finn is planning on something. Louis was glad that he had been studying spatial shields. Those death-threatening incidents can now be avoided easily. His spatial attributes are about to reach tier 1, and space and time are tier 3, but his mind is still tier 5. He has been focusing on space to survive. But while doing that, he has forgotten his other attributes. He guesses it's going to take some time. But he could see hope now and he was sure that he'd definitely survive. He then decided to start studying again. He then ordered to get a new book for him to read just in front of the mountain. When he got home to their castle, he went directly to their dining room to eat. He then noticed that his father would go somewhere so he asked his father. Genelosser then said that he needed to go to the Silver Flower Castle to attend the retiring program of one of the dragon elders. Louis then asked if it was one of the grandpas who would retire. Genelosser answered yes and also stated that calling the elders as grandpa is a bit too much. But for Louis, his grandpa's friends are also his grandpa. He also asked his father why he still needed to go to the castle. Genelosset then replied that he was assigned to the elder Kurt Escher's position, the one who would retire. Because of what he said, Louis was so proud of him and believed that his father was indeed powerful. Genelosser didn't deny it and even added that what Louis said was true. Louis is not the one who's grown over the years. His father, Genelosser, who had been top tier for a long time, finally achieved tier zero in dark attributes, a rare one. Even the average dragon can't do that. Genelosa reached it at the age of 4000, a young age for a dragon. That's enough to make him a final boss. In the original story, Genelosa, the berserker who ravaged the continent, had two main attributes, dark and magic. With those two attributes, Genelosa's entire body was dyed black. He was known to be the second coming of the devil. But Louis believes it won't happen this time. Louis has been training his ass off for the last 150 years to not let that happen. At this time, Genelosser felt nervous while calling his son's name. Louis then asked him what it was and then he answered that he didn't think he's gonna be home for a while. Upon knowing it, Louis was shocked. Genelosser stood and explained that parents of hatchlings normally aren't chosen for this. But this time, there's no one capable enough for the position. Nevertheless, the succession process is normally very long, and this time, it would only take 10 years. Louis felt upset upon hearing it. Genelosser was about to approach and comfort him, 
But then, Louis suddenly smiled and uttered, Dear God, that'll pass fast. Janeloser was so confused as to why his son changed the mood in an instant. Louis then said that he thought it was going to take another couple hundred years, and for him, ten years is just a decade and is not too long for him to wait. He then informed his father that he had recently started studying lawlessness theory, but then, his father suddenly felt sad and sat on the corner. Louis then concludes that his father expected him to cry and beg him not to go. Janeloser laughed and said that he didn't know what to expect now. He then asked Louis if there was anything he wanted to eat. He stood and told Louis to wait as he was just going to get some snacks. Louis wanted to stop his father since he believed he was not a child anymore that needed to be taken care of. Meanwhile, Janeloser is in his dragon form. His son was below him standing and he reminded him not to skip meals just to practice and always take his nutritional pills in their freezer. He also informed Louis that the emergency first aid kit was in the third drawer inside Louis' room. He was about to say some more reminders but Louis got irritated and angrily told him to just leave already since he had been saying the same thing for an hour. I'm not a kid anymore, and I'll only be alone for 10 years. He added. Janeloser then handed him a pouch while informing Louis that inside was a natural object called a communication stone. This item comes in pairs and when energized, they can communicate even if they're far apart. Louis then believes that it is very expensive, and he concludes that he and his father can still communicate even though they'll be at Silverflower Castle. But Janeloser was silent. He realizes that this item can't reach too far away. Louis then concludes that his father gave wrong information which he believes normally happens with the smartest people. I always said no news is good news. Don't worry about me and work on your projects. He said while putting the communication stone in his pocket. I guess I should get going. If you need anything, look for it in my room. Janeloser replied. He then flies while giving permission to Louis to read his books in his room if he feels bored. Aside from that, he warned Louis not to leave outside of the city since it's very dangerous. Really, you're a tough cookie, Louis uttered. He said these words knowing that Janeloser protected him from so many threats for the past 100 or so years. So for him, it is not unreasonable for his father to be worried about him. He then smiled while he uttered that he'd be on his own for a while now. Instead of being afraid, he screamed in excitement and claimed that this castle would be his own castle from now on. That was what he really thought, not until the night came and he heard Finn screaming for help. Finn looked so scared since there were two people trying to catch her. She looked so scared begging not to come get closer to her. But still, she was caught so she screamed in fear. She was calling Louis while the two people just laughed at her like evils. Someone then pulled her. It was Louis. What are you doing here? He asked. And these two visitors of Louis stare at him. It turned out that these were twins and they were very excited to see Louis. They said that they were invited by Janeloser to come over. They were talking so loud which annoyed Louis and told them to speak one at a time. As per Canny, the older of the twins, Janeloser went to the Silver Flower Castle. Khan, the younger, then added that they know that Janeloser will be back in 10 years so they thought Louis must be as worried as them. They were speaking lots of words but Louis doesn't like them to be around. He calmly asked them to get out but the two told him that he should not be so mean to them. These twins are troublemakers for Louis. They lived in the neighboring peak and they were fraternal twins dragons born 10,000 years apart. Louis was depressed because he wasn't growing taller, so for some reason, his father introduced these twins to him. He thought the twins were cute with their silver hair and chubby cheeks. They played a few times, but then they started coming without even asking and were harassing the place. He really thought he would finally be able to practice by herself. But now, because of his father letting the twins come over, he was so devastated. Anyways, we only came to play with Louis because we thought he'd be bored, but he's being a meanie. The twins stated. Khan was holding a sword while saying that he even brought some toys this time so they could enjoy themselves with Louis. Louis was surprised to see the sword Khan was holding. He suddenly grabbed it from Khan and stared at it. He then asked the twins where they got this sword but the two were clueless. This sword has something shimmering in its pommel. Khan then answered that he got this sword from his papa's storage room. His sister Kanny also gets a sword and shouts with excitement that they really took all of these swords from their papa's storage. Did you get permission from Uncle Carlos? Louis asked, but the two whistled to avoid answering Louis. This time, Louis believes that these twins sneaked into their father's storage room. He knows that this sword he got from Khan is a magic sword with a spatial attribute stone that contains much more power than he does. He stared at the pommel and he believed this shimmering thing was a magic circle. He asked Finn's opinion about why the magic circle continuously shines, and Finn then answered that she thinks it's broken and lost its function. But, she wasn't sure exactly and she could only feel that it was a very high-level spell. According to her, she has seen many subspace swords and staffs like this. But this one is very complex, so the size of the subspace must be very large. Louis suddenly chuckled upon knowing it and he confidently said that he would test the sword out by himself. Knowing that this sword came from a dragon's treasure trove, he believes the owner must have hidden something great in the subspace and his plan now is to claim all of it. 
A few hours later, Louis was still trying to fix the sword. The twins were also bored waiting for him, but after they complained, they then heard Louis say that he had finally fixed it. The three were so glad and Canny then asked him to test it immediately. Louis then told her to wait as he needed to push the elemental power first. While pushing it out, the energy comes out. It becomes strong which shocked Louis since he didn't expect it. He was very determined to check what was really inside and after a moment, the elemental power finally came out and it suddenly spun around, creating a powerful blow of wind. Louis feels nervous and concludes that it isn't the subspace. The power comes from the sword becoming stronger and even Louis struggling with it. The energy suddenly creates a silhouette that covers the three kids, including Finn. They suddenly disappeared and teleported somewhere else. They closed their eyes and they were spinning around inside the magic circle. When Louis opened his eyes, he was shocked the moment he saw himself in a place unfamiliar to him. The magic circle disappeared and they fell down and screamed. They slammed on the ground and lucky for them that they didn't get any wounds. They only felt a little pain since the ground was too hard. Louis was looking around, asking where they were. It turned out that they were in a cave. He stood and he was still holding the sword. He looked at the sword and saw the attribute stone blinking. Unfortunately, it got broken but the good thing was that Louis was unharmed. He, Finn, and the twins were shocked to see the pommel's sword break down. Upon realization, Khan cried and complained that Louis had broken his sword. Louis then told him that the one that got broken was only the attribute stone. But then, Khan still cried so much while saying that Louis broke his attribute stone. Louis asked Canny if she knew who really owned the sword. Canny then replied that she only heard that this sword belonged to her great-grandmother. Louis then asked her if her grandmother is a spatial mage but Canny doesn't know much more than that. Louis was just concerned and he needs to at least know what this sword was used for so he can also use it as well. While thinking, he heard Finn calling him, saying that there was something in the deeper part of the cave. It turned out that Finn was searching in the cave to see something useful but she ended up seeing a sword the same as the one Louis was holding. Louis then went to her and was surprised to see the sword. Finn guesses that these swords are not a subspace treasure trove, but an interdimensional gate that connects two different places. Louis was so disappointed in himself knowing that he was blinded by the treasure. He never denied the fact that he's being complacent and now he told himself to be more cautious. He dropped the sword on the ground and headed somewhere. Canny then asked him where he was going and he answered that he needed to know where they are so that they can go home as soon as possible. He walked together with Finn to explore the cave and he also told the twins to come with him. The four of them explored the cave, looking around, but then after a few minutes, they stopped by since their way was blocked by a substance. Louis then activates his space attribute and confidently says that he'll get everyone out of this cave. He then casts an attack and is able to hit the substance blocking the way. The substance exploded so the kids covered their eyes and ears. After it, snow dropped which excites the twins. Since Louis managed to open the way, he immediately climbed the substance to check what was behind it. The twins followed him but he was dumbfounded as he saw something. Finn asked him what it was, and he then said that the mountain in front of them was the Earth's right fang. Khan panicked upon hearing what he said while Canny said he thinks Louis meant to say that it's the left fang. It is because the mountain near their house is called left fang, while the one in front of them is on the opposite end of the world known as right fang. According to Finn, the Earth's right fang is a mountain located at the easternmost point of the winter continent, in short, they were now doomed, which Louis also believes. Still, they come out of the cave and explore the mountain. This world is called Eden. It's divided into four continents, and each continent has the same climate throughout the year. The spring continent, with its mild weather year-round. The summer continent, with its tropical-like climate and scorching sun. The autumn continent, with its cooler climate and high sunshine, which has been experiencing bountiful harvests for hundreds of years. And finally, the winter continent, with its cold, harsh climate of bitter winds and snow. After all this, the Genelosers home, the Nakchai mountain range, is located at the westernmost tip of the spring continent. And as per Louis, they were at the exact opposite end of the winter continent, near the Earth's right fang, located at the eastern tip. He smirked and suddenly laughed so loud while his tears dropped from his eyes. Because of his reaction, the twins were confused about what happened to him. Louis then admitted to himself that the reincarnation thing was bearable and wondered if he would overcome his current situation. He was trembling thinking that he was getting threatened all the time plus the outside world was full of danger. He didn't mean to get away from their house. And now, he was thinking that someone would find out that he disappeared to their castle and would cause his father to go berserk. He then remembers that he has a communication ball given by his father. He then grabbed it out but he got disappointed again since he realized that this thing couldn't reach space after all where the Silver Flower Castle is located. He suddenly asked Finn if it was possible to cross the East Sea but Finn said no. A demonic sea, a trace left behind by the worst of the evil dragons. The sea that separates the winter continent from the spring continent where all sorts of demons lurk. 
even adult dragons stay away from the place, and even if Louis is chosen by the four elements, Finn still believes that it is impossible to cross the sea since Louis is still too young. Louis sighed but he already expected what Finn would say. He asked another question Finn how long it would take for them to cross the continent and reach the left fang. And as per Finn, she doesn't know exactly but she guessed it would take about 10 years. Louis then thinks. He concludes that he might be able to make it back to their castle before his father returns if he would hurry up a bit. He then ordered the twins to listen up to him. He informed them that they were in great trouble and that they were exactly at the right fang located at the end of the winter continent. In addition, he let them know that they could reach back home in probably about 10 years. Canny then suggested that they must fly to go home as early as they can, but then Louis told them that flying is dangerous as they might get kidnapped. The twins were confused why but Louis didn't dare to explain it. He just told them that they can't fly so they must walk like humans and arrive in 10 years. Tom raised his hand and asked what would happen if they couldn't go back within 10 years. Louis reminded them that his father would go back to their castle within 10 years and there's something dangerous that might happen if they can't go back before his father. The twins were scared and asked him what exactly dangerous would happen. Louis then answered that his father would set the whole continent on fire looking for them so they must go home as soon as they can. But then, the twins were still confused and asked him to explain further. Louis then realizes that both won't be scared since they aren't human so they know they won't get hurt even if their clan would fire the whole continent. He then lied to them that their parents would surely beat them up if they couldn't go home on time and might also not buy them snacks and toys for 100 years. This time, the twins got scared. They both cried in fear and Louis at the same confirmed that snacks and toys are more precious for these twins than the well-being of the continent. Anyway, we just need to get home before our dads are back. I'm in charge from now on, so listen to me, he said with a clenched fist. But then, the twins won't listen to him since they also want to be the leader. Louis then told them that leadership is for the smartest dragons and he believes he's smarter than the twins. The two then reasoned out that he was younger than them. Louis then angrily reminded them that he was taller than the two of them. He also screamed that he was the one who said he should be the boss so they must follow them. But the twins still argued with him while Finn was staring at them and was disappointed knowing that they still had a long way to go and they must move without wasting lots of time. In the end, Louis became the leader while Finn was his support. The twins are the burden. Okay, we've got everything we need, let's go. He said, and the twins answered, yes captain. Before they could start walking, the sky became dark and Louis heard a thunder. He then prepares his thunder elemental stone and the two become excited upon seeing it. They both then wrapped themselves in Louis as they knew that Louis would get struck by lightning again, and they wished they had been struck too. Louis pushed them away since it would be dangerous for them to get struck. But then, the twins won't listen and still hug him tight so Louis doesn't have a choice but to allow them and warn them not to let go of him. The thunder becomes strong and Louis could feel that the lightning strike seemed to be bigger this time. All right, let's see what's coming. He uttered and extended his hand, expecting that his elemental stone would absorb the lightning strike. But then, it was missed. Louis was shocked since it never happened before. He then heard a noise behind him, and upon checking, it turned out that the avalanche slid heading toward them which rattled him. He then pulls the twins while he concludes that the lightning strikes ended up hitting the mountain. While he was panicking, the twins were enjoying saying that there was so much snow. Hey, burden team, transform quickly, Louis ordered. The pack of avalanches is almost near them and Louis gets nervous just by staring at it. Finn was worried for his sake. This time, Louis doesn't have a choice but to use his space attribute. He managed to make it on time but he basically disconnected himself from space. The avalanche hit them but they were unharmed since they were inside the space of Louis. They were spinning around but instead of panicking, the twins enjoyed it. They landed below the mountain and when the avalanche was calm, Louis managed to survive. But he was still nervous since he thought he was gonna die. The twins behind him were impressed at him as they were having fun with what just happened. They even begged Louis to do it again but Louis was mad and poked their heads. He told them to grow instead of acting like a child. They then check where the avalanche brought them and since it covers all the roads, they cannot see anything either so Louis accepts the fact that they can't really recognize where they are. The twins were calling his name as they were enjoying the surroundings that seemed to be a pool of snow for them. Khan even dived and his sister Canny also did the same thing. They were sinking themselves while Louis felt upset with the twins' childishness. He just told them to take it easy and get out since they still have a long way to go. But then, none of the twins comes out. Louis was mad as he thought both were just pranking him. He stomped on the area where the twins dived but he suddenly fell and unintentionally pulled Finn with him. He was panicking, asking Finn to fly him up but Finn said it's not easy since he's too heavy. Louis continued to fall deeply and he was screaming hoping that he would land as soon as possible. His ass slipped and there's still more to go. Finn saw something dangerous so she told Louis to look out. Louis then saw a cliff but there was no way for him to back off. He was telling himself to transform but he can't either. Lucky for him Khan and Connie appeared in their dragon form and saved him. 
The twins landed him safely and they both then transformed to their human form while saying that they were having fun. While they were jumping in happiness, Louis whispered to Finn to tell her that he thought he was gaining respect for the twins, and Finn then said that she also felt the same. Louis then stood and wondered where they were. They were observing the place and as per Finn, this place doesn't look like a naturally formed cave but it's more likely a man-made corridor. Louis agreed with her. But then, a part of him feels familiar with the place despite knowing it's his first time here. He was thinking about where he had seen this place but he couldn't think of an answer. Finn then asked him what they would do now and he answered that they must think about it and move slowly as he concluded it might take them further away from the exit. But then, the twins were so hard-headed as they ran and followed their instinct where the exit was located. Louis was mad and told them to slow down. He was about to say something but then he noticed that the twins stopped all of a sudden and stood still. He asked them what was wrong and Canny then asked him what's this thing in front of them. Louis didn't see it at first so he moved closer while Canny pointed to the direction where she saw the thing she was referring to. It turned out that she was pointing to several men in armor in front of them. These men had red eyes and their leader was not wearing head armor and had white hair. His eyes sparkled and this time, Louis saw them. He screamed in fear and the men in armor headed to them. Louis was wondering what it was. Finn behind him was scared and said that there was more than one of these men. These men continued to walk to the kids and they seemed to be mad. Khan asked if these men were humans but Kenny told him that humans don't have red lights on their eyes. Louis was staring at the man in front. He then concludes that this man is the Winter General. Before the webtoon story began, the heroic King Valencia saved everyone from a world crisis. After he saved everyone, even in the afterlife, he's said to be overworked. In addition, this is the place where this general was said to appear. It's the ice tomb of the great hero king. Upon realization, Louis discovered that the hero's tomb was too far away from his home. He also flinched when he deduced that the item he saw from the webtoon could also be found in this place. While he was thinking, Finn told him to watch out. The men in armor charged at them and they were so aggressive. Louis then called Canny and Khan, ordering them to get rid of all these men together. The twins immediately dashed to the men with their swords and Khan bravely jumped to one of these men. His sword creates lightning and he confidently says he'll go first. The man in armor was staring at him. He then attacked the man in armor with the sword he was holding and the man was able to block his sword. Fortunately, the man's shield got broken until it was completely destroyed. Khan landed on the ground upon slicing the man in half and the man in armor shined bright and exploded. Canny was upset since she wanted to get the first kill. She was complaining but then she immediately turned her head around as she felt someone approaching. Upon seeing an enemy, she immediately slashed it without any words. The enemy exploded just like what happened to the first kill of Khan. Canny proudly smiled and Louis at the same time confirmed that both really had the talent. The twins continued to battle and because of their bravery, Louis could say that the twins weren't just playing around this time. He also concludes that the twins' strength is comparable to a second-tier samurai. He doesn't mind having the twins by his side anymore. But to speed things up, he uses his time attribute and activates temporal slow time skill to the enemies. The men in armor seemed to be bound by a chain causing them to move slowly and even had a hard time swinging their swords. The twins instantly notice it and conclude that Louis enchanted their weapons with a temporal crystal. Because of it, Khan becomes more motivated to fight. He and his sister Kani then charged at the enemies and they were very eager to finish them all. The men tried to attack using their weapons but they were struggling to control it. Kani attacked one man with a double sword and she was laughing in satisfaction every time he killed one. Khan on the other hand slashes enemies all together and they end up exploding at the same time. Khan was so happy seeing their enemies explode and pop like popcorn. The twins had strong power as they charged together to the last man standing. The man was scared since he could not fight back anymore. The twins then slashed him without any hesitation and they both declared that this was the last enemy. The man shines bright and explodes as usual. The area was too messy after the commotion. Khan still wanted to fight so he got sad that the fight was over. The same thing as Kenny. She even said that the battle was too boring. Louis then acknowledged them for doing a good job. Why don't we try something more fun? He asked, and the twins wondered what fun he meant to say. Meanwhile, Louise was enjoying a cup of tea served by Finn. Good thing that Finn had everything inside her storage. Louis acknowledged the tea she made and she was glad and gave thanks to Louis for liking it. She then looked at the front where the twins were destroying traps. The twins were having fun so they were grateful to Louis. Louis at the same time warned Khan about the arrows heading to him. Khan managed to destroy it and Kani also heard Louis telling her to watch out for the blade on the left. Same as Khan, she was able to destroy the blade. Aside from these kinds of traps, there was also a giant boulder. Fortunately, the twins destroyed it together. After it, there's no trap left and they informed Louis about it. Finn at the same time was impressed by how the twins finished everything in one swoop. Louis stood and said that they were pretty much done in this area. Finn immediately cleans all the things including the table while asking Louis where this place is. Finn then informed her that they were at the Hero King's tomb. 
Finn was surprised and asked to make sure if this Hero King's tomb is where Hero King Valencia resided. Louis then answered yes and also told her that this place is where Hero King Valencia was buried. It's a dungeon of sorts, with monsters and traps, and they're made to ward off intruders who want to disturb the king. Once they overcome all the traps and obstacles and make their way through the many passageways, they'll reach the heart of the tomb where a sweet reward awaits. And more, this tomb is made to be found at the start of the adventure, to give some starting equipment to the party. In other words, it's a beginner dungeon as per Louis, and he's pretty sure no one has visited this place yet so he believes all of these treasures will be his. He chuckled while thinking about his plan and the twins wondered what happened to him. They then started moving and told the twins to be ready. After a few minutes, they arrived in an area that was too dark ahead. This area seemed to be covered with crystals which amazed the twins and Finn. The twins then saw a big and ugly monster heading to them so they immediately told Louis about it. Louis then said he knew as he also saw it. It's ten giant monsters and this is the final boss of his dungeon. He was staring at the door nearby and concluded that the treasure should be just behind this door. He then gave a signal to the twins to attack. Both Khan and Kani possessed their powers and Louis was glad that these twins were a good pair as they didn't seem to be intimidated at all by giant enemies. Dragons are destined to rise to the top from the moment they fly. At this very moment, these young ones are baring their teeth as they look down upon those far below them. The twins looked at Louis before fighting and they said Louis was the best for knowing a lot about this kind of place. Louis then asked them to end the final boss immediately. The twins then charge at the monsters, and the monsters then also prepare to attack. The twins aimed one each and upon hitting the monster, it instantly felt the pain. Louis at the same time used his power burst and attacked it to one of the enemies. One was screaming in pain and suddenly exploded. While the twins were fighting the final boss in a melee attack, Louis was also casting magic to assist the twins. Finn was so amazed at them since he never expected that these three would be good at fighting together. In just a short period of time, eliminating the final boss is done. The twins were satisfied and Louis was very excited to check their reward so he immediately headed to the room nearby. He slowly opened it and there was smoke coming out. Canny and Connie were so excited, waiting for Louis to open the door widely. Louis then pushed the door and the silhouette of the golds reflected. All of them were speechless upon seeing lots of treasures inside. Khan immediately runs to the treasures and dives to the gold coins. Kanye and Finn were also surprised and they still could not believe that there were a lot of treasures in front of them. Finn called Louis to check something he found but it seemed like Louis didn't hear her. Louis headed in front as he saw Hero King Valencia. Hero King Valencia was sitting on his throne but he was still covered with crystal. Finn approached Louis and asked if the man in front of them was Hero King Valencia. So many years have passed, and yet he's still alive. She added. Louis at the same time noticed something. It was a writing that Louis believes is an ancient winter language. From the origin, creatures of light and darkness were born. They were designed as good and evil. As the remaining light and darkness intertwined, chaos ensued. In the midst of the turmoil, a distinct boundary emerged, separating good from evil. The earth was created, and earthly beings were born from both sources. The good and the evil creations, who called themselves exalted beings, were unaware of the world below. They only dreamed of denominating each other, and the conflict between good and evil caused all other beings to suffer. Eventually, those on earth who couldn't bear it, drew their swords against the good and evil. The dragons led the way, followed by the humans and the half-breeds. After a long struggle, the victorious earthly beings scattered to the continents of the Four Seasons. In the course of time, they forgot about God and evil, and they forgot about the dragons who took up the task of vigilance. But, the hero King Valencia warned everyone that the dragons who sacrifice themselves for peace will return to the world once again. And so will those good and evil beings. As for the last generations who heard about that war, hero King Valencia will leave it to them. Since it was Louis who last heard about this war, hero King Valencia wants them to pass down the story. Louis was wondering if there was such a thing as demonic war in the original universe. At the same time, he was furious at the fact that hero King Valencia left them a task. But for him, it isn't important right now. He also saw a book in front of him which he believes is the book of the lawlessness of the hero king Valencia. Valencia is an unorthodox genius who reached the zero tier in the human body. This theoretical book contains the sum total of everything he has accomplished in his life. It's no exaggeration to say that the original protagonist, Swordsman Kendrick, became the strongest in the human world. Louis lifts up the book since it's more useful than the other treasures. He looked at the golds and realized that it would also be a shame to leave these golds behind so he decided to take some. He grabbed some while singing but unfortunately, the crystal covered by Hero King Valencia started to crack. Louis turned his head around and he was shocked to see the huge crack in the crystal that covered Valencia. The crystal exploded but lucky for Louis that he was unharmed. Still, he got nervous. This time, Valencia's weapon struck on the ground and he was now free, in other words, he was now awake. Valencia's eyes opened and Louis started to rattle knowing that it wasn't in the original story. 
Valencia pointed his index finger on the ground and angrily told the kids that they were not in their territory. The twins were nervous since it was also their first time seeing Valencia. Louis then informed them about Valencia's identity and they were shocked to know that this old man in front of them is Hero King Valencia. Louis also let them know that Valencia was a tier 0 warrior so there's no possibility for them to deal with him now. He suggested that they must transform into a dragon, but before they could do anything, Hero King Valencia moved his huge sword and said that only death awaits those who are greedy. He lifts his sword and casts a powerful magic that scares Louis. He wanted to run but then his legs were trembling and he couldn't even move. He then concludes that it was the effect of a tier zero. He turned his head around and saw the twins who were also scared, trembling in fear. This time, Louis becomes brave for the sake of his comrades. He was still holding the book and he told himself he shouldn't die especially because he already trained his ass off. He activated his magic power and absorbed it. He clenched his fist while Valencia at the same time swung his sword to Louis. Louis punched Valencia's attack while screaming that he wanted to live longer. Luckily, he managed to hit Valencia. He smiled as he thought his attack harmed the hero king. But unfortunately, Valencia cast another attack on him and he saw it as death. This second attack coming from the old man is so powerful that it even destroys the ground where Louis is standing. When Valencia launched his attack, Louis covered his face with his hands and small particles of rocks flew to him. When Valencia's attack cooled off, Louis slowly opened his eyes and he was surprised to see himself still alive. Finn then immediately hugged him since she really thought Louis died. Louis grabbed her away while thinking about how he remained alive. He looked at the ground and was shocked to see the distraction Valencia made. Canny pointed above and told Louis to look at it. There was already a hole in the ceiling and Louis was dumbfounded knowing that Valencia's blade could split the ceiling of a cave. Because of it, he got annoyed at Valencia and he couldn't believe a single human could do this kind of huge destruction. As he stared at Valencia, he noticed that Valencia was holding his wrist. He then concludes that Valencia changed the direction of his slash at the last moment. At this point, Valencia seemed to be trying to stop himself from attacking. He suddenly dropped his sword which confused Louis. Valencia communicates with Louis using telepathy. He said that he protected young dragons. Still, Louis was confused. Valencia pointed the way and told Louis that they must leave and be careful along the way. What? What did you just say? Louis asked. Unfortunately, the tomb started to collapse. Finn then told Louis that they must leave and Louis at first was hesitant because of what Valencia said. But then, Valencia suddenly dissipates and Louis wants to stop him from leaving but he knows there's no way to do it. The wall behind him collapses and he sees the twins cry in fear. Louis grits his teeth, telling himself that it isn't the time to think about what Valencia said to him. He immediately transformed into a dragon and told the twins to get up. The twins then transform and they leave the tomb together. At the same time, Finn was holding Louis horn since Louis flew faster than her. A huge ice crystal was heading their way but Louis immediately cast magic and attacked the ice using his reality split. The huge ice crystal shattered to pieces and the kids successfully avoided it. They then saw an open wall and directly headed to it. Louis was screaming and they all exited the tomb. Outside was still covered with ice. The snow in the middle suddenly moved and burst. It turned out that it was the kids who successfully exited the tomb. Louis was panting since he panicked thinking that he almost died. This time, he thinks about the situation again. He was sure that Valencia was aiming to kill them but he suddenly stopped himself, otherwise, they were all dead. Louis wondered why Valencia did it if he also said that he would deal with the intruders. Besides, there were words Valencia said before he disappeared, it's just that Louis couldn't understand it clearly. But the most important thing for him now is they all survived. Plus, he got what he really wanted which is the book. Finn suddenly called him and told him that she thought the twins were having a hard time. The twins are still scared and they are both weak because of what just happened. Louis then tells them to follow to find a place to rest. They just went to the area nearby and transformed into their human form. Louis lay on the snow and he felt relieved that they survived. He was about to close his eyes but then he heard the twins crying. Khan and Kenny cried out loud and Louis understood how they felt and believed that both were just way more shocked since they were too young. He approached them by giving them a pill and told them to take one each to boost up their mana. The twins listened to him and Louis also took one of the pills since he almost ran out of mana especially since he never pushed himself so hard since he was reincarnated. He then lay down on the snow once again and the twins also went to him together. The twins lay down beside Louis in sleep. Finn was staring at the kids and wished them to sleep better. While the kids were sleeping in the snow, Finn was just guarding them to make sure the kids were safe in the middle of the night. The next day, the twins gained their energy back and even ran in the snow while laughing and playing around, shooting each other with snowballs. Louis at the same noticed that these two didn't feel bored with the snow. Finn also said that the twins still have the energy despite what they have been through. Louis smiled as he agreed with Finn. After a few minutes of walking, Louis realizes that they might have reached a deserted area since he can't even find a house, 
let alone a village. He was also confused as to why they didn't encounter any monsters the whole way down even though there are monsters in the Winter Continent. As per Finn, the Winter Continent is home to more monsters than any other continent, and because of the cold climate, there's always a shortage of food. There have been tons of stories of monsters hunting humans for food. After explaining, Louis asked the same thing why they didn't encounter monsters, and Finn replied that it may be because Louis was here. Also, there are a total of three dragons hanging around so she believes no monster is big enough to dare approach them. Louis then concludes that there's no need to hide their aura for now. While they were talking, Khan called Louis. Khan pointed nearby as he saw a cloud of smoke. All of them then immediately ran, headed to the smoke, hoping that they could see someone who could help them. But unfortunately, Louis was dumbfounded since they ended up seeing a small village burning. Finn deduces that this village must have been attacked. She asked Louis about what they should do and Louis decided to go down to the village hoping that they could see survivors. As they went down, they saw corpses of humans and even monsters. Louis continuously walks alone since they split up their way and he concludes that it must be a monster attack. Finn then came to him and Louis asked her if she found anything. But then, Finn shook her head and said that she didn't think there were any survivors. Khan and Kani also came back to him and reported that they also didn't see anyone alive. The twins looked so tired and they saw they were now hungry. Louis then threw them a pill and told them that they must get out of this village. But then, before they could leave, Louis heard someone approaching. As he checked it, he saw a man riding in a cavalry together with some guards. Louis immediately grabbed the kids despite the fact that they were still eating. He ran as fast as he could and immediately hid. The twins then asked him why they were hiding and Khan thought that it was because Louis was afraid of humans again. Louis then answered that he was not afraid of humans. It's just that his deadly situations can mix up with random events. But then, the twins didn't understand what he meant to say. Since the men were approaching, Louis told them to remain quiet and hide their aura. He wished that these men would go through since he didn't want them to get caught. Another guard came to give a report to their head. This guard reported that this village must have been attacked by monsters and there don't seem to be survivors. The coachman then replied that he would report it to the Archduke himself. He went down from his horse and went to the carriage behind him. He called the Archduke but before he could give a report, someone said that she had been informed and would go down to see for herself. The coachman opened the door of the carriage and the Archduke of Canberg then came out. Do you really need to see it for yourself, especially considering the situation? The Archduke said, I am the Archduke's wife, and if people have been harmed in my lands, it's my duty as mistress to comfort their souls. His wife replied. The Archduke then permitted his wife and the lady then get off from the carriage and held hands with her husband. As she looked at the surroundings, she witnessed lots of corpses. There was even a mother and a helpless son. Upon seeing the dead, the lady felt dizzy. Her husband was worried for her and told her to just go inside the carriage and rest. Are you going to make me feel unforgettable? The lady asked. The Archduke sighed and said that he couldn't still win against his wife's stubbornness after 10 years of being together. The lady smiled at him and said that the one who loves more usually loses. She then looked at the coachman and asked once again if there were really no survivors. The coachman said no and according to him, this time of year, monsters are usually less active, but for some reason, they started going on a rampage yesterday. He also concludes that the monsters were being chased by a superior being. The Archduke felt sorry for what happened. He was trembling and blamed himself, believing that this incident might not have happened if he hadn't mobilized the village. His wife then told him not to be hard on himself since she believed it wasn't his fault. While they were discussing, Louis overheard them and he was shocked as he concluded that the village faced a horrible incident because of them. He feels guilty and his conscience is being pierced. While they were hiding, one of the twins burped and was heard by the humans. Louis panicked and the coachman then ordered them to reveal themselves. Louis was annoyed as it seemed like this story turned out to be a motivational story about parenting. Come now, the coachman said while pointing his weapon in the direction of the kids. He said that he would cut the place down if the intruders didn't reveal themselves. Louis was thinking about what he should do now knowing that he couldn't just keep hiding. At this time, the coachman possessed a scary aura and he said, I clearly warned you, whatever happens next is all your responsibility. He then swung his sword and hit the area where the kids were hiding. His attack creates a strong blow, making the house shattered. Louis covered himself with his hands and even Finn flew away and spun around. The coachman was able to destroy the whole house making them able to see the intruders. But then, he was shocked to see three kids. The Archduchess then concludes that these three children are survivors. Louis then smiled since they weren't caught. He then cried too loud to act and persuade the humans to believe that they were really survivors in this village. The twins were dumbfounded to see him suddenly cry but then, Louis told them to cry just like what he did. The twins then understood him instantly and they both cried too loud while screaming mommy. Because of what they did, the Archduchess felt pity for them. She approached the twins while the twins said they were scared. Louis on the other hand was puzzled by the fact that the twins seemed to be smarter than him. 
The Archduke then approached him and asked if they were the only ones who survived. Louis then answered yes while still crying. The Archduke patted his hair, believing that these kids had gone through a lot. He then turned around as he heard his wife calling him. The lady asked him a favor to take the children with them to their castle. Without any hesitation, Archduke agrees since he also feels pity for the three kids. He then told his coachman to take the kids and get ready to go back to their castle. Louis was so dumbfounded as he never thought that the Archduke and Archduchess would think of taking them. The guards then pulled him and let him ride the carriage, leaving the place and also Finn. Finn was puzzled seeing Louis leaving together with humans. Meanwhile, the three kids were already in the castle of the humans. Louis immediately took a bath and he was still thinking how they came to this situation. He thought they could get away with it if they pretended to be pitiful, but it seemed like the twins acted too well which made the nobles feel pity for them. He never expected that the Archduke and Archduchess were such good people. Now, he accepted the fact that everything happened for a reason. He instead decided to observe the situation and find an opportunity. While thinking, the kids came and played with him. They splashed him with water on his face and then laughed so loud because of his funny reactions. Louis was not annoyed at them. In fact, he was glad to see these twins seem so carefree. All of a sudden, two castle maids came and acknowledged their cuteness and their fair skins. Louis decided to turn around as he was annoyed with the maids' noisiness. After taking a bath, the maids then guided them to the dining hall where the Archduchess was waiting. The three finally changed their clothes and were now presentable that even the Archduchess almost didn't recognize them. You must be hungry. Come and eat quickly, the lady said. As expected, the twins run to the table too fast upon seeing lots of delicious food. They sat down and grabbed whatever food they wanted. The twins ate like they were not worrying at all so Louis wondered how they adapted to the situation so quickly. He just eats peacefully, believing that they can leave this place soon enough. But he told himself not to act hastily since he was afraid things might go wrong with Finn. Upon thinking about it, he realizes that Finn is not around him. He wasn't aware that Finn was still trying to catch his direction. She tried to chase the carriage earlier since she didn't want to be away from her master Louis. Unfortunately, while chasing the carriage, she was captured by snow eagles which is why she missed the direction of the carriage. Now, she was very eager to find the castle and went back to Louis. When the night came, Louis couldn't sleep so he walked inside the castle but he accidentally heard the Archduke and Duchess conversation. He heard the Archduke say that they couldn't keep the children with them together. Louis decided to take a peek and confirmed that it was really the Archduke and Archduchess. The lady said that she keeps hearing their son Renu's voice when she looks at the kids. The Archduke understood her feelings, but for him, attaching their deceased child to those children wasn't right. He asked his wife to let go of their son since there was no way they could get back Renu's life even if they wanted to. But then, the lady was mad and asked him how he could just easily ask a mother to forget her child. This time, Louis understood that the lady recently lost a child which is why she's been unusually kind to them. He also witnessed the lady hold the Archduke's hand and beg him to accept the children to be their sons and daughters. As expected, Louis doesn't like the idea. The next day too early in the morning, Louis was still thinking about the conversation of the Archduke and Archduchess. It hadn't been long so he couldn't believe that the nobles wanted to consider adopting them as their heirs. The Grand Duke of Canberg is a member of the royal family of the most powerful country that rules the Winter Continent. Being the adopted son of such a grand duke means Louis can instantly establish himself as a key figure in the country. He could say that it must have been a difficult proposal even from the grand duke's wife and he believes the pain of losing a child was that great. It would be better for him to leave before things get more complicated but seeing the two kind people feel the pain made him uneasy. He was thinking of Finn, believing that he could discuss it with the fairy. He was startled when he saw something splat on the window. Fortunately, it was Finn. Louis immediately opened the window and let her enter. Finn immediately hugged him and he asked where she had been. Finn apologizes to him and Louis tells her to always stick close to his side and Finn then promises him. The twins suddenly came and were glad to see Finn again. They then approached Finn and Finn then said that they could now leave again now that they were finally together. Louis agreed with her but he honestly told her that there's a part of him thinking of staying a bit longer. Finn asks him why, and as per Louis, the nobles have been kind to them and heard that they have recently lost their son, so he thinks it'll be a bit awkward if they all suddenly leave. Finn was speechless but he was surprised with the decision of Louis. For Louis, they were not in an urgent situation, and they could also gather more information about the winter continent. Normally, Louis is very composed, but now, Finn can see that he's vulnerable in situations like this. However, looking at him being so affectionate makes her want to save him even more. If Master Louis feels uneasy, how about doing this? She said, and Louis then permitted her to say what she was thinking. According to Finn, dragons have considered first encounters important since ancient times. In a way, the Grand Duke and Grand Duchess are Louis' first acquaintances so she suggested that Louis can leave a simple gift and go. She gave an example that if the issue is not having children, she believes it'll be solved if the Duke and Duchess would create one. 
Louis scratches his hair and tells Finn that creating a child isn't something that can be done so easily. He then flinched as he deduced something. He realizes that they don't need to give the Duke and Duchess the baby immediately. And when their child is born, he believes it will be fine for them to suddenly disappear. He acknowledged the idea of Finn and Finn was so proud of herself knowing that her master liked her suggestion. Louis then invited them to prepare for their next step. After an hour, the Duchess was sitting on the terrace. She was peacefully thinking of something but she turned her head around the moment she heard the twins calling her. The twins invited her to play and the Duchess believed that the twins were bored so she asked them if they wanted cookies. The twins answered it's great but they both sat down to have a talk with the Duchess. While they were talking, Louis was peeking and was glad that the twins followed his order. He trusted them so he went directly to the Duke. The Duke was discussing with his two subordinates but he paused upon seeing Louis blocking their way. Louis was smiling at him but the Duke was puzzled. Do you need something? He asked, but Louis answered no. The Duke then asked where his friends and Louis answered that the twins were playing together with the Duchess. Are you not afraid of me? The Duke asked, and Louis answered not really. Usually, children are scared of the Duke and won't even dare to approach him so he feels unusual to see Louis approaching him, just like his son. He suddenly smiled a little and carried Louis and asked him if he wanted to play with him. Louis showed excitement as he answered sure. He then walked, heading to his study room with Louis, leaving his two subordinates in confusion since they could not remember when the last time the Duke smiled genuinely. After a while, the kids meet in their room and discuss what happened. Louis then asks the twins if they successfully completed the mission and the twins salute and answer yes captain. As per canny, they had a great time drinking tea and eating cookies with the Grand Duchess. Louis was glad with their report and he then asked Finn if she also completed her mission. Finn was holding a paper and then reported that Grand Duke Canberg usually wakes up at 5 a.m. to start his duties. Around noon, after lunch, he continues with his remaining tasks and engages in training after dinner. His average bedtime is around 11 p.m. and he contacts the Grand Duchess about five times a day. After her report, Louis acknowledged her for doing great. Canny was about to say something to Louis but she addressed Louis with his name so Louis got annoyed and reminded her that it should be Captain. Captain, we did what you told us to do, but what exactly are we doing right now? Kenny asked, and her brother Khan added that what does making a child have to do with playing with the Grand Duchess? Louis was so stressed with them for asking too much but he decided to give them knowledge. He said that relationships between couples need to be intimate to have a child. In addition, he believes that the Grand Duke and Duchess are emotionally distant due to the recent loss of their child. If they spend time laughing and enjoying themselves with the cute kids, he concludes it would help them lift their spirits. He was also sure that the sadness of losing a child will gradually fade and then step by step, they'll become more comfortable with each other. Then naturally, a history might be written at night. Why write history at night? Does it write better at night? Canny asked in confusion, and even her brother didn't understand the last statement of Louis. Louis just told them that there's something that kids don't need to know. He then grabbed the book, making the twins feel confused. He put the book on the table, it's the book of alchemist formulas for elixirs, a thousand variations. Shall we get started for real? Louis uttered. Finn was staring at the book and asked Louis what it was all about. Louis then replied that he found this book in his father's library while researching ways to enhance the effects of elixir. He experimented with various elixirs and got caught by his father and his father then sealed it after scolding him. He never thought that his research to overcome his limited time would come in handy. He opened the book and found what he really needed, which was an elixir of ecstasy for couples experiencing boredom. It was said in the book that a few drops of this elixir can reignite the dwindling flame of love. There was also a one-shot solution, a 100% success rate elixir designated for couples who want to have a child. Louis suddenly opened the cabinet and instructed the twins not to tell anyone where he was. He then casts his magic and activates his expansion skill. After it, he made the small cabinet into a spacious room which he believes is enough for him to make the elixir. He then smiled as he was ready to start. After a few hours of making the elixir, Louis ordered Finn to go to the kitchen. Finn was hiding in a pail and slowly opened it to make sure no one could see her. She was holding the elixir and followed the instruction of Louis. As per Louis, she should sprinkle these potions on the ingredients the Grand Duke and Grand Duchess will eat tomorrow. He also reminded Finn that the potions should only be sprinkled in the ingredients the Duke and Duchess would consume. But now, Finn doesn't know which ingredients the Grand Duke and the Grand Duchess would eat. She was still holding the potion while thinking and in the end, she sprinkled the potions to all the ingredients she saw. She then went to the storage room and she decided to also sprinkle the grains knowing that the chef would also make bread for the Grand Duchess and Duke. She put it in the water and used her magic to spread it. The grains absorbed the potion and Finn is glad that she completed her mission. He then heads back to Louis to give her a report. 
The next evening, Louis peeked into the room of the Grand Duke and Duchess. If Finn did what he instructed, he believes that the food the Grand Duke and Duchess ate today should have contained the elixir. While he was trying to figure it out, he heard some maids pass by and were talking about their crushes that suddenly confessed to them. They continued to walk away without seeing Louis so Louis was relieved that no one saw him. He continued to peek into the Duke and Duchess room and saw the lady sitting on the couch while her husband was just standing. The Duke cleared his throat, trying to cut the awkwardness. He glanced at his wife but the lady didn't dare to look at him. The lady at the same time felt a little strange. It was her heart that kept pounding. The Duke suddenly held her shoulder and both of them suddenly felt a thrilled emotion in their heart. Honey, you look exceptionally beautiful today, the Duke said which surprised the lady. They both held hands and made love but Louis didn't dare to watch anymore. The most important thing for him is that his plan worked. He was startled the moment the twins suddenly came, asking him what he was doing. Louis panicked and immediately grabbed the twins away from the Duke and Duchess room. He then smiled while he looked back at the room of the Duke and he was happy that they had done what they needed to do. The next day, the weather is sunny which makes the Duchess happy as it's been a while since they had such sunny weather. While they were walking inside the castle, heading to the children's room, the Duchess noticed the other maids panicking. She then asked them what was going on but no one dared to answer. She immediately opened the door of the children's room but the maid inside was startled and the Duchess didn't see anyone aside from the maid. She asked where the children were, and the maid cried and explained that when they came in the morning, the children were nowhere to be found, and they were still looking for the kids among the people. One lady then called the duchess and told her that there was a letter on the table. The duchess immediately grabbed it and was shocked the moment she read it. It was written in the letter that the kids assumed the duke and duchess would be surprised by their sudden disappearance. However, there is a meeting, there is also a parting. They said they were leaving for their own path and they sincerely thanked them for their kindness during their time in the castle, and they hoped the duke and duchess overcome the sorrow of losing their son quickly. Louis also put a wish below the letter, saying that a new fate will come to the grand duke and grand duchess. He also hopes that the two would shower as much love on the new life as they showed them. The last part of the letter is Louis' name and the others. After reading the letter, the grand duchess cried and blamed herself that it was her fault for letting her desires burden the children. There was also a part of the letter that she couldn't understand. That is the new life Louis mentioned. A few weeks later, the Grand Duke and Duchess received good news. The Archbishop told them that the lady was expecting a new life. The lady was confused and the Duke suddenly grabbed his hand. The lady then remembers the letter she got from the kids. She was shocked and the Duke concluded that those children already knew the lady would conceive a baby. The lady cried in happiness and said that those children might have been fairies sent by God. We can't just let this rare opportunity pass. Open the warehouses and distribute bread to all the commoners right now. The duke said. His men then listened to his command and the commoners were glad with the blessing they received from the duke. That year, the Duchy of Canberg recorded the highest birth rate in history. The unintentional gift created by someone's small mistake would later lead to a huge butterfly effect. But it's still a story from a distant future. As for Louis and his companions who left the duchy, they were still traveling, trying to get back home. The twins were enjoying their trip and Louis reminded them that they needed to travel for at least 10 years. The twins then jumped in happiness and were even willing to travel even a hundred years. Because of their childish behavior, Louis felt stressed so Finn motivated him to stay strong. Louis cannot deny the fact that they wasted too much time in the duchy. If unexpected situations like this keep happening, he believes their journey will only get longer. To minimize travel time, they need information to quickly cross the continent, but there's no immediate solution for them now. While walking, Kanye suddenly asked why they never crossed paths with monsters. Khan also joined the conversation by saying that he was confident in catching monsters. Louis then told them that there were three dragons around emitting a strong smell so there wouldn't be any possibility that there was a monster that would dare to approach them. The twins smelled themselves and told Louis that they didn't smell anything to themselves. They also asked if they could cross away to bandits and Louis replied, with a clear view in every direction and nothing but snow as far as the eyes can see, even if there were bandits, where would they come from? Unless bandits suddenly sprout from the ground. After saying it, three bandits jumped behind him. These bandits then ordered them not to move and hand over everything they had. The twins were glad upon seeing bandits sprung up the ground just like Louis said. Louis saw the bandits and was shocked as he couldn't believe that bandits would really appear in this place. The bandit with an eye patch realizes something. He suddenly smacked the man standing beside him and said that the people in front of them were just kids. I was stuck in the cold snow all day, just going to catch these brats. What are we going to do now? He asked. The other man then replied that these kids in front of them might be from a decent household so he suggested taking them and demanding money. The man with the eye patch thinks about it first, and he agrees, then orders his companions to get the kids and tie them. The two men suddenly paused since Louis asked them if they didn't feel something strange. The men asked him what he was talking about. 
There are just three kids in the middle of nowhere without any guardians. Wouldn't be quite uneasy if you were in my shoes, Louis said. The man thought he was implying that there were adults nearby but Louis said no. The man then asked him why he would say such a thing but Louis told them to think about it for a moment. Finn then whispered to him, asking him what they should do. These guys surely have looted treasures, right? We should plunder everything without leaving a single thing behind. Louis replied. Khan and Kenny then asked Louis to play again together with the uncles in front of them. Louis sighed as he didn't like the idea but then he realized that it's more profitable to raid these men's bases. The man with the eye patch then asked his two companions why they were just standing blankly. He ordered them once again to seize the kids immediately, but then when he looked at the kids, he was confused seeing the one in the middle raise his arms. We'll surrender. We'll follow you quietly, Louis said. And the three men were blank. Louis then asked them not to hurt any of them. The three men agreed to Louis and brought the three kids with them. Instead of worrying, the twins were calmed and even sang while heading their way. One man noticed something suspicious from them so he told the man with the eye patch about what he felt. He explains that kidnapped kids shouldn't be relaxed like these three now. For him, the kids looked like they were taking a stroll without any danger. The man with the eye patch then said that they just needed to make a profit off these children, either by ransom or by selling them into slavery. After a few minutes of walking, the fat man then declared that they had finally arrived. Louis was shocked upon seeing the sturdy place. The twins at the same time were excited to explore another place. Upon entering, Louis observed the surroundings and noticed that the intricate craftsmanship was at the level he had only seen in his father's estate so he wondered if this place was really the bandit's hideout. Isn't our hideout cool? This was all made by our boss, the fat man proudly said. Louis then asked who their boss was and the fat man was about to say it but the man with the eye patch hit his head. Why are you running your mouth carelessly? What if those kids go somewhere and talk about it? The eye patch man said angrily while grabbing the fat man by his collar. The fat man then apologizes to him and he is ordered by the eye patch man to take the kids and put them in prison. The fat man followed the order and imprisoned the kids. The fat man then leaves the prison and the three make sure that no one is around them. Louis then permitted Finn to come out and Finn breathed deeply. Louis then commanded her to go and thoroughly search for anything worth plundering. Finn immediately flew away and since the kids were in prison, the twins felt bored and asked Louis if they could come out. But then, Louis told them they shouldn't and just waited for Finn to come back and would have fun later on. He was smiling evilly thinking that he would get lots of treasures from this bandit's base. At the same time in the other area of this bandit's base, there was a blacksmith forging a weapon but he was disturbed when one man came to report that they were back. It turned out that this blacksmith was Pablo, the Blood Axe Bandit's leader. Pablo then asked the Eye Patch Man if they got a lot of loot and the Eye Patch Man then replied that it was not too much because of the monsters running rampant and scaring off travelers. He then smiled and told Pablo not to worry since they still bring something useful. He reported that they had kidnapped three kids who were walking down the streets which he believes were from fairly wealthy families. He suggested Pablo make a profit from those kids by asking for ransom or selling them into slavery. Pablo laughed so loud and said, good, well done. He then led the way to meet the kids who were still at their prison. At this time, the kids had already fallen asleep. Louis slowly opened his eyes as he heard someone coming. He then saw the boss of the bandits which is Pablo and Pablo then agreed that the three kids really look so decent. One thing Louis noticed was that Pablo seemed to be strong. He concludes that Pablo must be at least tier 3 or higher. And for him, Pablo doesn't seem like the type to be a bandit in a place like this. While Pablo stares at the kids, he feels something strange. He suddenly saw a pair of eyes above Louis which scared him. Louis was confused by Pablo's reaction and he then smiled as he realized something. He called Pablo by addressing him as a chunky uncle. Pablo asks him if he is referring to him and Louis then answers that there's no other chunky uncle besides him inside. Louis then asks Pablo's name which annoys the eye patch man since he doesn't like how Louis acts disrespectfully to their boss. But then, to his surprise, Pablo said his name. The eye patch man asked Pablo why he was acting differently and Pablo was trembling as he answered that he suddenly felt chills and he might be catching cold. Still, the eye patch man was confused so he couldn't believe that their boss would act like this. Louis at the same time chuckled thinking that Pablo took the bait. Pablo suddenly walked away, telling the eye patch man to handle the kids as he would rest for a bit. Pablo was startled the moment Louis said, leaving already. All right, take care. See you later. Pablo was so scared and ran away from the prison. The eye patch man also ran and at the same time, Finn came back to the prison and saw these two running away. She then reported herself to Louis and said that the warehouse and everything were empty. And instead of treasures, she believes the bandits might starve to death. Louis was so annoyed as it looked like they stepped on shit knowing that these bandits were penniless. He then suddenly mentioned that humans were the real wealth from ancient times. Finn asked what he meant to say but Louis didn't explain it at all. Louis then ordered Finn to take care of the twins while he was out for a moment. 
Finn didn't agree with him and wanted to accompany but then he said that the twins might cause trouble once they woke up so Finn should be with them to avoid it. Finn felt sad but she didn't have a choice but to follow Louis. Louis then grips to the grills of the prison and easily bends it out. He then comes out and utters, so now, shall we go catch some suckers? Pablo on the other hand went back to his room and rested on his couch. He felt relieved after he walked away from Louis. He was wondering about Louis' identity since he never felt strange like this before. For him, he feels like he is facing an unbeatable monster right in front of him and his whole body feels paralyzed. He then calmed himself and said that a mere kid couldn't scare him. He suddenly chucked and said that he must have lost his touch after resting for too long. Louis suddenly came and asked him what was so funny. Pablo shouted and stood. Louis then waved at him and said that they would meet again. Pablo then asked him how he escaped from the prison, and Louis directly answered that he just walked out. Pablo went near Louis but only to grab his weapon and told Louis not to come closer to him. Louis then walked inside Pablo's room and noticed that Pablo had a nice place to rest. I don't know how you get out, but I'll close my eyes just once, so leave right now. Pablo stated, what if I don't? Which annoyed Pablo and said that he didn't have a choice but to beat Louis until he left. Don't wanna, though. Louis won't leave, you know. Try hitting me, try it. Louis said bravely. Pablo then swung his weapon with all his force then he realized that he was just angry so he ended up swinging it hard. He wanted to take it back but he knew it was too late. But he wasn't guilty at all knowing that it was Louis who provoked him first. All of a sudden, his weapon paused and his hand suddenly stopped moving on its own. Louis remained standing in front of him while he was so confused about what was going on. Louis smiled teasingly and asked him what was wrong and also reminded him that he was supposed to hit him. You're just a big softy despite your size, huh? He added, and this time, Pablo was full of anger and swung his weapon for the second time. Louis stood still and even smiled. Surprisingly, Pablo didn't hit Louis at all so he tried several times but the same thing happened until he felt tired. He dropped his weapon on the ground and he lay down and panted heavily. Louis yawned and then asked Pablo if he was already done. Pablo then asked Louis who he really was and Louis then said that Pablo already knew the answer but just denied it. But then, Pablo was confused. Their discussion got cut off when Louis heard Finn calling him. Finn was panicking as she reported that the twins were causing havoc saying they were bored. She was also disappointed with herself since she could not stop the kids herself. This time, Pablo was dumbfounded upon seeing a fairy. Finn also stares at him and approaches him. She feels odd and Pablo asks why. As per Finn, Pablo definitely smells like a dwarf but then his size is more like an orc. Louis then said that Pablo is a half-dwarf and probably born between a human and a dwarf. Finn was puzzled and asked Louis how Pablo was much bigger than a human. I don't know about that. It's already fascinating as it is. They both then heard Pablo asking them how he could be a half-dwarf. I told you, didn't I? I bet you already know who I am. Louis answered, and he was ordering Pablo to try remembering it. Pablo was puzzled for a moment, not until he remembered something. Back then, his father was forging a weapon while he was standing behind. His father told him that there's something they, as dwarves, must keep in mind. If they ever meet someone in the future and his legs tremble or his body shivers, and he feels an uncomfortable urge to obey them, he has to run away without looking back. That time, Pablo was confused. His father then informed him that he isn't a pure dwarf, perhaps he can break free from the bonds of blood. But as long as Pablo inherits a part of his blood, Pablo can never be completely free from the bonds of blood. And if such a situation arises, Pablo must run away. Pablo then asked what would happen if he couldn't run away, and his father then said that if he's in a situation where he can't run away, then he must do as they say. His father grabbed his shoulder and reminded him once again to run away if he encountered such a being. He said that Pablo was born with half-human blood and he believes his son is not a complete fool. Pablo asked what those beings exactly were doing. His father covered his mouth and said that those beings' ears are always open so he should never use his mouth carelessly anywhere. His father also said that day what beings he was referring to. At the present time, Pablo realizes that this kid right in front of him is a dragon. Louis smiled at him and said that he was correct. Louis really had a feeling of Pablo's real identity because of his size and it turned out that his gut feeling was right. Ever since he first saw him, he felt a sense of deja vu like when he saw the dwarves doing the lair repair work with his father. Dwarves are an intelligent race so he asked his father if it was okay to exploit them for free. His father told him not to worry since it was the dwarves' comeuppance for what they had done to them for generations. That's what they called the bonds of blood. Even after researching further, there was only one record mentioning how the entire dragon race was almost wiped out because of the dwarves. He couldn't find any more information than that. It's unfortunate. But if they made a mistake that almost caused the mighty dragon race to be wiped out, he guesses he doesn't need to sympathize. Pablo is now afraid of Louis and asks him not to come closer. Louis then said the dwarves have instilled fear of their kind through the dragon's blood. 
He then claimed that Pablo would now be his lackey. Pablo doesn't like his idea at all and even says no. Master Louis is really blatantly calling him a lackey, Finn uttered. Pablo kneeled in front of Louis and he unfortunately cried. Louis then told him that it's okay as it is how life goes. He asked Pablo's age and Pablo replied that he just turned 50 this year. Louis then winked and stated that Pablo was still too young since he was already 250 years old this year. Pablo was shocked and said that Louis was still a hatchling since he was still 250 years old. Louis was annoyed and said that he wasn't a hatchling but a mighty and dignified dragon. Pablo then believes him and Louis confidently says that he isn't lying. He then tapped Pablo's back and told him that he should work under him for about 10 years. Pablo was shocked since 10 years for him is too much. Louis then stated that it could be even less than 10 years and he'll be free again once he's done. Pablo asked what work he had to do and Louis pointed at him and said that his job was none other than to bring them home for world peace. Pablo was puzzled and asked Louise what world peace had to do with bringing them home. Louis then asked if he knew what he meant by them and Pablo answered the dragons. Louis asked what else and Pablo answered a hatchling. That's right, a hatchling. But have you ever heard of this story? Louis asked. According to him, it is about a naive knight who kills a young hatchling and calls himself a dragon slayer. The father dragon who lost his child and was blinded by anger, furiously destroyed the entire kingdom. Pablo asked if this story was real and Louis said, Even monsters get angry when their babies are hurt. Do you think dragons will just stay still? Especially if those parents were two zero-class dragons who have reached ascension. Pablo was scared the moment Louis proclaimed that the world would face an unprecedented catastrophe. Pablo finally gets what Louis was saying but he questions why Louis entrusted such an important task to someone like him. But even Louis doesn't know the answer. He thinks for a moment and he just realizes that Pablo is the first one who caught his eye and seemed easy to handle. Louis just lied that Pablo was the chosen one, plus he had a strong shoulder and a robust physique. He can see that it's very sturdy and wouldn't break even if he rolled around. He also said that Pablo had a fearless spirit and an action to match. Anyone who would dare to challenge him will surely disappear on their own. And even at a glance, he can see the loyalty that overflows from his whole body. Also with the dwarf's blood, there's no need to worry about betrayal. He then proclaimed that Pablo is worthy of being chosen by the dragons. Pablo was thrilled and Louis at the same time lied that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Think about it. It's not just one hatchling, but three, Louis said. He also stated that if Pablo can safely bring them, young deer like hatchlings home, their parents would surely not let his efforts go unnoticed. Finn at the same time was dumbfounded at how Louis said they were a young deer. Pablo's eyes sparkled the moment he heard Louis say that incredible rewards beyond his imagination awaited him. How is it? Does that give you some confidence that you're chosen? Louis asked, and Pablo answered yes with excitement. Finn was amazed at how Louis managed to persuade Pablo. Louis then asked Pablo if he would come with them and Pablo answered yes without any hesitations and he confidently said he won't regret it. Louis smiled and suddenly used his magic on Pablo. Pablo was shocked and asked Louis what was going on. What do you mean what? It means you're putting on the leash yourself. Louis answered. But Pablo was still confused. Louis then said that it's the blood so-called bonds of blood imposed on Pablo's kind. Any promise made in front of a dragon must be kept unconditionally. Pablo then asked what would happen if he broke the promise. Louis then says that it's nothing much, he explains what would happen and upon hearing it. Pablo feels so down and says that he cannot believe he can't carry on the lineage. Louis then told him not to feel down since nothing would happen if he kept his promise. Still, Pablo was hesitant to believe so Louis told him to find another dwarf to ask if he couldn't trust him. They then went to the prison to fetch the twins, and Louis introduced Pablo to the twins and informed them that Pablo would be their temporary guardian. The twins were amazed upon seeing Pablo and they believe Pablo is a giant dwarf. Come to think of it, how did you become that tall? Since you're mixed blood, you shouldn't be that tall, right? Louis said. According to Pablo, when he was young, he was smaller than his peers. He thinks it was around when he was 20 and he happened to eat some fruit and fell ill for 10 days, and when he woke up, he was stronger and taller. Louis was surprised upon hearing it. He then asked how the fruit looked, and Pablo answered that it was a strange-looking fruit with a shape like a bone. Louis was more shocked this time. He suddenly opened his book to search for some information. From the book, he found a fruit called growfruit that has water attributes, high rarity and promotes growth without side effects. It's a water-based elixir that grows by absorbing cold as nutrients. It produces an average of 3 minus 4 fruits without blooming and it shows the best effect after 200 minus 300 years of growth. He showed the image of the fruit to Pablo and asked if it was this fruit he was referring to. Pablo answered yes since the image looked exactly like the fruit he mentioned. Louis gets excited and believes that he can defeat the twins after eating this fruit. Pablo then informed Louis that he needed to inform his subordinates that he'll be leaving, but then, Louis told him to stop. Pablo asked him why, and Louis then told him would have to wait and their top priority now is to get a grow fruit. 
The twins get intrigued and ask him what this girl fruit is. Louis was annoyed at them and he didn't have any intention to tell them about it. Pablo then said that there was a little problem and Louis angrily asked what it was. According to Pablo, the place where the fruit was located has been occupied by a group of snow orcs and it's not easy for him to approach those creatures. What are you talking about? Stop the nonsense and just go guide us to the tree, Louis said. Isora came out as he turned around and added that he would take care of the rest. Pablo is scared at this moment, but in the end, he gives what Louis wants. They went above a cliff and below was the orcs campsite. As per Pablo, the place wasn't this big when the orcs first settled here, but now, he can say that the place looks like it has grown a hundred times. So, where exactly is it? Louis asked, but Pablo didn't understand what he meant. Louis then said that he was looking for the grow fruit, and Pablo then said that he remembered it was probably in the middle of the orc camp. Louis became mad and pointed at Pablo, believing that the orcs already destroyed the tree. Pablo then told him not to worry since the place where the tree was was under the cave. He said that it's a place that is invisible. Also, he already mentioned that he only found the fruit by chance so he believes those orcs won't ever find it. Louis felt relieved. He then called the kids and immediately slid down to the orcs campsite. Palbo panicked knowing that snow orcs are several times stronger than regular orcs so they should make a plan first before doing a hasty move. Finn suddenly told him not to worry but still Pablo is doubting the kids. Finn then believes that Pablo thinks of these three kids as mere children since they look so young. She then told Pablo to look at the kids and she said that they, fairies, praise dragons as the strongest beings on earth and also fear them. While the three kids slid down to the campsite of orcs, some orcs noticed them. But then in their eyes, these kids seemed to be scary. The two orcs saw the kids were rattled and the twins jumped toward the orcs and slashed them instantly. More orcs noticed the kids' existence. Canny then charged at the orcs bravely to kill them. They fought more orcs and seeing their abilities makes Pablo speechless. Still, he worries knowing that snow orcs aren't the type to flee so easily even if dragons have unmatched power. There's a saying that a rat before a snake, right? Those orcs are exactly that. Finn said, as per Finn, even if the snow orcs were violent, just by having the top predator in front of them, they'll itch to submit. With their minds driven by their soul instinct, it's still not sure that they can withstand the noble aura of a dragon. This time, Pablo understood Finn. He understood that the dragon's fear makes them lose all their willpower and fall into fear just by facing it. Finn then said he was right and she added that the three kids were still young but if they go through the second molting and grow up, just by facing the aura alone might overwhelm those snow orcs to the point of being massacred by the swarm. While Pablo was looking at the kids fighting against orcs, his subordinate came, which annoyed Finn since she needed to hide again. Boss, are you alright? The entire canyon is shaking. The eye patch man asked, and he got dumbfounded the moment he saw the orcs campsite below them being wiped out. He asked Pablo what was happening, and Pablo pointed at the kids fighting and told his subordinates that these three kids were the ones they kidnapped. Louis bravely fought against the snow orcs. He used his magic and exploded two orcs. The twins also used lightning whirl skill and killed numerous orcs. The eye patch man was surprised to see the abilities of the kids. He smiled and asked Pablo if he already knew about the kids' ability the first time he saw him. But then, Pablo didn't answer. The eye patch man really believes that their boss Pablo immediately realizes it as soon as he sees the kids. They might look young but they had tremendous power. He added, Pablo was stuttering as he didn't know what to see. Finn then whispered to him to follow what she said. She ordered him to answer of course to his subordinate and Pablo followed her, and his subordinate was impressed by him believing that Pablo was a talented person who could indeed recognize people. Pablo then said that he asked the kids to deal with the snow orc since this is what Finn whispered to him. His subordinate then asked him what kind of monsters these kids were and Pablo pointed at him, scolding him for calling the kids monsters. It is also what Finn whispered but then Finn was startled that Pablo also copied these words. She hits Pablo and asks him why he copied everything. Pablo was about to say it to his subordinate but then Pablo realized that he got it wrong. He cleared his throat and ordered his subordinate to take good care of the kids since they're not people they can treat carelessly. His subordinate was confused but he didn't get any explanation from Pablo since they heard one orc roaring so loud. This orc seemed to be the boss of orcs, and he was facing Louis. He swung his sword strongly which even made the sand blow. But then, he was dumbfounded upon seeing Louis catch his weapon and asked him if he was done. Louis then uttered that it was now his turn. He strongly punched the weapon to the orc and the oar, flew away and slammed into the tunnel. He sunk on the ground as he was knocked out. Louis was disappointed that this orc was knocked out instantly. He said it was so boring, and on the other hand, Pablo and his subordinate were speechless. Blood splattered around since the kids mercilessly killed the orcs. When the orcs were wiped out, the twins sat down and said that this fight they had was a little bit tough. Louis then threw them a pill and told them to take a rest for a moment as he needed to go somewhere. When he looked above, he saw Pablo's subordinate, but he didn't care. He was just annoyed that Pablo didn't go down. 
he gave a signal to Pablo to come down and Pablo then told his subordinate to stay still as he needed to go check the kids. His subordinate offered to accompany him and Pablo was touched and asked him if he was sure, but then his subordinate suddenly changed his decision and told him to just go alone. Pablo then went directly to Louis and asked him what he needed. Louis then asked him where it was but since he didn't complete his sentence, Pablo got confused. Louis became furious while asking him where he could find the grown fruit. Pablo then told him the directions. It was a cave with a small entrance. According to Pablo, if they pass through this entrance and go a bit further into the cave, they should find the fruit. He started to enter at the small entrance but he flinched when he couldn't move. He was so confused as to why he could not enter since he clearly remembered that it was easy to enter this cave back then. Louis at the same time smelled something strange coming from the butt of Pablo. He ordered Pablo not to push himself. He instructed him to just stay outside until he came back. Louis then entered the cave alone and looked around. After a minute of walking, he saw a silhouette that he thought was grow fruits. He came closer to the silhouette and he was speechless upon seeing the tree of the fruit. The tree was shining and luckily, it had fruits hanging. Louis then runs to the fruit with excitement thinking that he will now finally grow. But as he got so close to the fruit, he noticed that it was too small, not even half of the size shown in the book. He was disappointed as he concluded that the fruit's growth must still be incomplete and would probably take 200 years to fully grow. He also believes that the effect of the fruit would diminish if it's still immature. He was wondering what he should do but in the end, he decided to get out of the cave with just nothing. Pablo then asked him if he found what he was looking for and he answered with a disappointed tone that the fruit was really in the cave but the fruit hadn't fully ripened yet. Pablo asked what he would do now and he answered that he needed to wait until it was fully ripe before eating it. He was about to walk away but Pablo said that someone might steal the fruit if he would just leave the fruit on its tree. Pablo was scared the moment Louis Madora appeared. Let them try if they can, Louis uttered. It turned out that he put a barrier to the tree so no one could get it. He also put out a no-entry note and he said on the note that touching his stuff would make them unlucky for a generation. There's also a word, if you're not afraid of the consequences, go ahead and touch it. You have subordinates under you, right? Let's use them, Louis said. Pablo asked why it should be his underlings, but Louis was mad again at Pablo for questioning so much. Since Pablo was scared of him, Pablo allowed him to do what he wanted. Even if Louis set up traps using all sorts of tricks, he was still uneasy, so he needed someone to watch over the grow fruit until it was fully ripe. They went back to Pablo's place and Louis gathered all the men of Pablo. He was standing right in front of the men with crossed arms, and the men waited for him to speak. But then, Louis was disappointed after observing the men of Pablo since he didn't see anyone who was decent enough for the job. He smiled as he knew that the fruit was worth investing his time for his future weight growth. The men of Pablo wondered why all of them were gathered in one place. They even thought that there would be an upcoming battle to happen. Even the eye patch man wondered why Louis came back and now standing in front of them like a superior. They were startled the moment Louis started to speak. He greeted everyone and said that he was the one who gathered them to deliver important news. He declared that the blood axe bandits were now disbanded as of today. As expected, the people were shocked and even Pablo. Pablo uttered words beside Louis but Louis acted like he didn't hear anyone. The eye patch man then approached Pablo and asked him if he really agreed with the kids but Pablo was also confused. At this moment, the twins were holding a stick and Louis then called them. Let's begin, Louis uttered, and the kids then answered okay with excitement. Both twins then headed to the men of Pablo and the men were scared of them. The twins then started hitting them with the wood, not just the three of the men but all of them. Pablo felt sorry for his people knowing that he could not do anything either. After a few minutes, the kids were done hitting the men. The men of Pablo were in pain and Louis at the same time acknowledged the twins for doing what he said. See, this is your reality. All of you can't even handle two kids. Louis said despite that he knows the twins aren't just kids. The men of Pablo rise to forcibly listen to Louis. Louis then told them not to worry as he would make sure to thoroughly reshape these men. A few days passed, Louis still trained the men of Pablo and even scolded them for not doing the right thing. Pablo's men feel weak since they trained without resting. Lucky for them this time, Louis allowed them to have a 10 minute break. The two men he handled are the fat man and the eye patch man. The fat man lay down on the snow and wished that he fainted. The eye patch man agreed knowing that those who fainted are at least won't get beaten. The fat man suggested running away but the eye patch man disagreed since there were guys from the next room who got caught running away and had to do self-training at night for two days. But we're not even soldiers to begin with, why should we undergo this training? The fat man asked, do you think it's still worth living for? Maybe you're still thinking like that, but I've given up on thinking. The eye patch man replied. He also told the fat man that he must empty his mind and endure the beatings as he believed the day would pass. The fat man cried and he wondered why their bodies weren't breaking down but were perfectly fine the next day even though they get beaten every day. Louis overheard what the fat man said since he knew the reason. 
thanks to his father's finest potions that he mixes with the men's dinner meals for them to quickly recover their strength after sleeping. He also injects them with willpower through mental training during exercises to prevent them from becoming lazy. Plus, teaches them martial law the books he brought from his father's study room to ensure they grow each day. Although it's basic, it's knowledge from a martial law book from the dragon's library. It's a bit of a waste to teach these guys, but it's inevitable for Louis if he wants to quickly develop these men as he desires. For him, these men were so lucky enough. Pablo suddenly approached him and Louis then asked him how his task was going. Pablo then replied that he managed to finish the task. Before he could complete his statement, Louis said he did a great job and told him to go ahead and prepare. The lion throws its cubs off the cliff to make them stronger, Louis uttered. He was smiling evilly while Pablo was behind him and wondered what he was planning to do this time. Meanwhile, Louis let the men of Pablo have a trip. They were so clueless about where they were going and there was also a bag behind them. They all got startled the moment they heard Pablo scream to move aside. As they turned their head around, they saw a catapult. Pablo was the one pushing it. The eye patch man then asked what would be the purpose of this catapult in their trip and he even thought they were going to siege somewhere. Before Pablo could answer, they heard Louis call their attention. Louis believes that these men were curious as to why they were gathered in this area. But instead of explaining everything that would happen, it's better for him that these men would see it for themselves. He then called Kenny, his experienced assistant for now, and Kenny then ran to the catapult and sat down on the bucket. Upon seeing what she did, Pablo's men panicked. Louis then asked Kenny if she was prepared and Kenny confidently answered yes. Louis then screamed fire and Kenny flew far away. She was so happy that even Pablo's men said she was crazy. Pablo at the same time realizes that this is what Louis means by throwing the lion cub off the cliff. His men were scared while staring at Kenny flying away. They then noticed something happening to the bag Kenny was wearing, which was the same bag they had. It turned out to be a parachute, and seeing how Kenny safely landed made the men speechless. All right, all right. The catapult and parachute both worked very well. Did you all see? That's how you do it, Louis said. But no one responded at all so Louis thought the men didn't see it properly and wanted him to demonstrate it once more. He then called Khan and the same thing happened to Khan. Louis then noticed that the twins flew a bit further than where the grow fruit was and he believed it was because the kids were light. But, it's still fine for him since the distance is within the acceptable range. With this, he believes he can mobilize the men quickly before his potion is stolen. How was that? It's very easy, right? All you have to do is fly, whoosh, and then pop, you arrived. He said, but Pablo's men are still scared. The fat man suddenly ran away, calling for him, and said that he didn't want to die in a place like this. Louis then snapped his finger and a barrier appeared in front of the fat man blocking his way. The fat man bumped into the barrier and fell to the ground. I know, I know, it must be scary, but with a little courage, you can do it too. Louis said, shouldn't we hear from the ones who are thrown? Who in the world would do such a crazy thing? The eye patch man said and his companions agreed. Louis looked at Pablo and told the men again that they could do it. Perhaps if someone else demonstrates, you'll understand. Louis uttered while staring at Pablo and smiling. Pablo got terrified and asked Louis why he was staring at him so scared. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000 likes. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time.